What's up, everybody? Welcome to Dirt to Whiskey with Mike and Billy. I am Billy. That is Long Beach Mike. And this is season two. Season two. It's good to be back in the saddle. We've got a lot of stuff that's gone on since uh, the last, what, three months? Absolutely. Man. So what are you? I, what are you drinking tonight? Oh, I'm drinking. Before we get into all the last stuff of the last three months, what are you drinking tonight? Tonight, I picked up Tatouche. It's made in Seattle. It's handcrafted. That's about what I know. It's actually very, very good. Look at it. You'll be proud. No ice. Nice. No That's a healthy yeah. pour, too. Yeah. Nice. Cutting those calories, bro. Cutting those calories. Yeah, the ice adds calories, right? It, you'd be surprised. <laughs> well, the ice just makes you drink it quicker, which adds calories. So there you go. What are you drinking? So tonight I got this uh I got this bottle of Jefferson's Ocean. It's uh aged at sea and it's Voyage 25. So basically in a nutshell, Jefferson's casks the bourbon, then they load the bourbon onto basically ocean going vet, you know ships this one left savannah all the way down through the panama canal all over through the south pacific australia um i believe it went across the atlantic uh, i think it takes a number of years and when you typically put spirits into a cask it goes into a storehouse it expands, contracts, the wood expands, contracts, sucks the, you know, the spirit into the wood, back out and in, back out. And that's kind of what ages it and gives it its flavor. But it's never really shaken. It's never really moving. So when you put it onto a ship and the ship maybe has different temperature gradients and the spirits moving around, it kind of gives it a little bit of a different taste. So this one, it's, you know, it's sweet. It kind of has like a little bit of Kind of like a rum sweetness to it. Um, not too spicy. Caramels. Very, very good. Very good. Um, like kind of scent uh, when you get a, you know, get a whiff of it. Palate, you take, take it in, taste it. And there's nothing really, no burn to it. It's actually pretty good. And this actually got recommended to me uh, by my friend Ryan. He picked up a, up a bottle of it, said, hey, you got to go get one of these. Go try it. It's pretty much... It's pretty slept on. Um, not a lot of people, they didn't make a lot of it, but it's not really well known if that makes sense. So top the shelf. bottle, top, top shelf. Um, it's like, I think I, I paid $70 for this bottle. Um, so it's not cheap. Um, then again, it's not the most expensive. Sure. But again, I, I'm a firm believer that they're, they're, it's like, it's a, it's like a bell curve, right? So, you spend so much money and I think there's like a sweet spot where you're spending too much and you don't get what you're paying, not, not what you're paying for, but there isn't a giant quality change with the amount of money. It doesn't scale. So there's, I've had $70 bottles, $50 bottles that taste better than a $250 bottle. And point of reference uh, this is a great story i'll go into real quick over the holidays i was at my wife's family's house and they used to own a bar they used to have a bar in their house there was a bottle of wild turkey that was in their bar that was unopened that still had the tax stamp on it that nearest i could tell was from 1971 that bottle is worth thousands of dollars online. I opened it and I could not drink it without putting an ice cube in it because it was so harsh. And I think you pay for the rarity and you don't necessarily pay for the flavor. Sure. But this Jefferson's Ocean Aged at Sea, it's pretty good. If you guys are looking for something to try, um, try and track down a bottle of it. I highly recommend it. Outstanding. Well, don't be afraid to drop ship that my way. It's the kid's birthday this month. They'd appreciate so, it. So they'd like some bourbon for their yeah. Uh, birthday. Yeah, their dad would. There, You'll need it, too. Are they teenagers yet? Oh, they're going to hit 11. Oh, it's, it's getting close. So close. So I said drop ship. Yeah. So why what, And why what, would I have to drop ship? Yeah. And why are, why, we, why are we not in the same place like we normally are? Because I am now a resident of beautiful Bellingham, Washington. It really is beautiful up there. 
most of the time. Most when it's not snow and ice. Yeah, I've gotten everything. I've gotten floods. I've gotten snow. I've gotten. I hit black ice the other morning in the cruiser on the way to work. That was pretty. Um, I didn't need coffee after that. I, no. I white. I white knuckled it all the way in. Oh, so I, I bet. I live. I live about fifteen minutes outside of the city, so I'm in a pretty rural area for a short distance. And uh, yeah, it gets pretty crazy back here. I spent. We even uh, shut down the shop for a few days just because the snow got so bad. Oh, so, that's Washington. Yeah. We just shut everything down here because of COVID. Yeah. Oh, well, <laughs> we, we got that too. Yeah. But yeah, it's definitely a lot different. That's for sure. So you basically packed up the family over the summer. You took a trip and on your trip, you kind of ended up in Washington state. And, you know, it seemed like after you got back from that trip, like, you really, from what I got from you is that you really had a good time up there and really enjoyed the scenery, um, and kind of like the pace of life up there. Well, so I think it's only fair to our listeners to kind of give it. I didn't drive home and say, Hey, we should move up to Washington. No, but but that's why that place kind of clicked with you because you'd been up there and spent some time up there. But the reason being is your story to tell, not mine. Yeah. So when I got home, I I was let know that I should probably relocate. And the kids and I really did enjoy our time in Washington. It was uh it was awesome. And you know, we did three weeks on the road, three thousand miles. We went all through California's coast and through Oregon coast, and then we did the Olympic Peninsula and we got into Seattle. And originally I thought Seattle was going to be the spot, but after going around Seattle, I found out Seattle (laughs) was not going to be the spot, but, uh, you know, by dumb luck, I had a cool job interview. So I drove up to Bellingham to check it out. And the rest was history. We went home and I rented a U-Haul and moved me and the kids up here. Yeah. It's, it's really like I commented on one of your posts earlier. It's God's country up there. Right. It is. My grandfather lived on the Olympic Peninsula, so I I went up there, you know, a couple times a year. And, you know, it's just absolutely beautiful scenery, clean, fresh air. Uh, When you do get out of Seattle, like I've spent a lot of time in Seattle, too. But once you get out of that urban environment, like it's, you know, it's just like here in Southern California, right? It's wall to wall people for, you know, 30, 40 miles. But once you get outside and all the trees are green and the grass is green and everything's, you know, not covered in dust and dirt, it's actually pretty nice. And I can't fault you for uh, wanting to head that direction at at all. It's crazy, man. You know, according to uh, the Googleizer, there's less than 8 million people in all of Washington. That's like less than L.A. County by probably half. Yeah. So... (sighs) The, the only thing that is SoCal like is that the cities are still, everybody's in the cities. So Seattle is, is LA. It's huge. It's crowded. And then we have like other cities that are not nearly as big, but Tacoma, it's yeah, it's like there's pockets of cities that get pretty crowded, but if you wanted to live rural and not see people, that's no problem here. Tons nice. of tons of areas to explore. I live a mile off off of Lake Wacom, which is a huge lake, and then I live probably 6 miles off the ocean. You've had to learn how to pronounce all those weird names up there now, huh? For sure. Yeah, it's probably taken some getting used to. Yes. So, also the you've had a vehicle change too. I did. I did. So I ended up the white jail is gone. Yeah. I sold the white JL to move up here, and then I sold the silver JL to, I don't know, just sold it to, to sell it, to, to buy yeah. a beautiful 1985 Toyota Land Cruiser, and I, I've been good. I haven't spent yeah. too much money on it Yeah, yet. you've been good, and you know, you. <laughs> I try to be like, I try to be the you know, the, the voice of reason on the shoulder that is, uh, my friend Billy. And you listen to me sometimes, sometimes not, but 
you know, so far the cruiser seems to have worked out way better than the Suburban ever did. Well, yeah. And, it doesn't you know, hurt but that I, it's I, not I a knew newer. You, which you had those heated seats and traction control, don't you? So dumb. I could have just waited until after winter to sell it. Hey, but didn't somebody tell you that? Yeah. Yeah. Why, I, yeah. I've never listened. Why, to, why am I going to start now? Why am I going to start yeah, listening now? Yeah, I guess now? you haven't listened to me for, what, 15 years we've known each other? So why start now? Uh, but it's but been yeah. pretty awesome. LS swap yeah. on 35s. ARB locker goes where I want. That thing's pretty dialed. It looks starts good, mo- too. Starts and most it doesn't of the time. have rust. Most of yeah. the time. Yeah. Yeah. No, it is. It, it's pretty clean. I replaced a lot of the trim items and stuff like that on it, but there's it always good. more. My FJ60 looked like it sat on the deck of the Titanic. Like you could open the door and almost see daylight through the A-pillar. So no, find we're pretty good there. there. Finding one of those that was pretty rust free it must have come from you know like the eastern side of washington or somewhere where they don't really get the uh you know the weather and snow and the mag chloride and stuff on the roads yeah i'm kind of bummed i don't know too much of the history of it but i could tell you i took it through a car wash this weekend and lost a lot of trim items (laughs) i was so stoked to be in seattle and finally have a car wash i could drive through and then all, all of a sudden the kids are like dad Dad, What's that you can see all through the windows, you can see all the chrome pieces hanging off the roof. Oh, shit. Yeah, that's no good. Listen, we just shaved weight. So we're into season two. This is season two. We're going to call it season two just because of the long hiatus. Um, and we've spent some time behind the scenes trying to get um, the audio dialed a little bit better, try to figure out how to do the remote podcast thing because as as all of our listeners know and all you guys know that as much as you love listening to us or absolutely hate listening to us our guests are usually pretty entertaining and being that we're already billy and i are spread apart we wanted to be able to make it easier um, to have guests on the show so we've had some help with that and um billy do you want to introduce uh you want to introduce our season two, episode one guests? Oh, so they can start capping on me? Absolutely. Sure. Why not? We all will. Yeah. Well, so Liz, she's going to be on. Hey, guys. Hi. Hi. Anyway. And we've known each other. God, it's like already like six years now, right? Yeah. It's been quite a while. Yeah. It's, it's a, a long start. time. <laughs> so I don't, Liz, I don't know a lot about you. So if you know, just basically through Instagram, I see the photography pictures, but, uh, you know, which are amazing pictures. You you. definitely have an eye. Uh, And I've gotten bits and pieces from Billy here and there. And you also uh, do some shooting, I think. Yes. uh... (laughs) I do. So why don't you tell us a little bit about, about yourself? Oh gosh, I'm better with questions. I'm not so good about, you know, waxing poetic about myself, but um Only question away. Yes, thank you. <laughs> wow. All right. <laughs> well, I think the coolest thing about Liz is she's pretty adventurous. I've never seen her really shy away from anything or a challenge, and she's kind of a jack of all trades at this point, right? I mean, yeah. when we God, when we met and we started hanging out and then I took you out off-roading and I thought, wow, I'm going to impress these chicks. So we decided to go do John Bull in the snow in the JK. (laughs) How'd that go, Liz? Oh, it was nothing went wrong. Not a single Mm. thing. We didn't have a problem getting home. We didn't have to like, you know, no. We made it to Tilted Kilt. It was great. (laughs) That's true. We did get back. Oh my gosh. Tilted Kilt. I forgot about that. Oh yeah. Yeah. It cost me a set of tires and a tie rod. It was all worth it. I think I remember that phone call after that trip. Yeah. So of, well, on it Gold wasn't Mountain, my fault. That's all I have to say. <laughs> yeah. On Gold Mountain of all places, it was all icy and it just V-notched mm-hmm. and just bent the tie rod. And then I winched it back into place, wrapped the, the line around the axle, straightened it back out and said, it, we could drive it home. And when it was in the snow, it was fine. And then we got on the freeway to go home and it was like, oh, mm-hmm. man. This is worse than we thought. Yeah, you know, I was actually pretty impressed on how you recovered from that because 
you know, depending on the individual, some people just start panicking or freaking out. And so at least you did something and we got out and we, we were all out. in good spirits the whole time. So yeah. That was even better. Yeah. And then, and then because of that, Liz was working at a gun shop and then I went to go pick up a, an AR and that's when I learned that Lid is what very competitive, active shooter, mm-hmm. right? Shooter, is that what it is? <laughs> sure. Yeah. Sure. Um, I so I've been shooting for many years. I've worked in the firearms industry for I don't know, 10 or 11 years at this point. Um, but I've only recently just gotten into competition legitimately, I would say. Uh, I've done what two now, but um I it's actually in the forefront of one of my focuses. So I'm going to um, be working on that a little bit more and get into some of that stuff. So is that like really three exciting. gun? I haven't done three gun yet. It's also on okay. my list of things to do. Um, but no, I haven't done that yet. So right. So I, so far I've done steel challenge, which is basically there's a bunch of steel targets that you have to shoot. And then there's um, IDPA. I'm going to get all this wrong. So people are going to laugh at me. That's fine. Um, but I'm there's crazy. like <laughs> there's different things. So right now it's, move really fast and shoot the things and try not to miss or hit like poorly. Gotcha. <laughs> there you um, go. <laughs> is it like US, USP? USPSA. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, USPSA, as I've been uh, joked with, with friends. Um, I think it's IDPA. They had, there's so many different kinds. Honestly, it's kind of a whirlwind. Once you get into it and once you're more familiar, I'm sure it's, you know, just roll off your tongue, but I'm still a newbie. I'm okay yeah. with that everybody's got to start somewhere Mm -hmm. so what that being said what is your what what is your gun of choice when you're doing those matches oh Uh, so um so far i've done uh anyone who knows firearms might laugh at me so my uh the steel challenge my first match my first anything i decided to take a 220 which is a 45 and it's a double single action pistol which is hilarious to start out with but whatever i like to go hard (laughs) um so right now i've been doing stuff with 19 uh it's actually a pretty stock 19 too uh i kind of like to get into it where it's super difficult and then once i've gotten skills and i've gotten a little faster then i can upgrade my uh tools basically and then also upgrade my skills so kind of moves faster i hope theoretically but so right now i've I've just been using a glock 19 pretty stock okay is it it's it's stock nineteen? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. So it's like right out of the box, yeah. ready to run. There you go. So uh, I, I just did a- swapped out. Sorry, I just swapped out a trigger that a buddy of mine made. Um, and so we're gonna test that out and see how that runs. But I really like it. But go ahead. What? Sorry. So the last um, kind of training day that I did was AR and uh, handgun. So it was a bunch of different drills. Mm-hmm. Um, put on by basically our ex army rangers um and i and i used i have all these guys out there with their trick glocks sigs this and that i got a 1911 on on my waistband um single stack you know four and a quarter inch barrel uh like combat <laughs> yeah combat commander yeah and you know what it has a wilson uh combat trigger in it uh, polished feeder amps. I kind of went through and did some stuff to it. And the guys with like these like super fancy like H and K's and SIGs, like some of them ran flawlessly all day. Some of them had hiccups and jams. The 1911, people like to make fun of it and go, oh, you want some peanut butter with your jam? It's not a single hiccup all day. Awesome. And yeah, and it's kind of been my go-to gun. Um I have a SIG uh, 2022 in 40 mm-hmm. Smith & Wesson. I love that gun. That's a great gun. Um, nice. But the, the thing I picked up recently that I, it's been on my list for a while is a Smith & Wesson 686 plus in 357. Sweet. And I got a two and a half inch barrel and a four inch barrel because why not? Um, but what is your round count per year? Do you really keep track of that? How much no. you shoot? Why would I do that? I would have yeah, to where are you going, face Mike? how much money I spend on uh, ammo. No, couple times sir. a month, couple that times is, a week. No, um, I, we're not going there. <laughs> no, we're not going there. Um, and I mean, so well, I don't want to mention that on camera. I'll tell you that after too. But no, uh, I, I, okay. it's a decent amount, I'd say. Um, okay. And I, I would 
unfortunately, I believe um, it's not super consistent either. So there are okay. times where I go through, like I'm shooting all the time. And then there are times where I haven't shot forever, but it also depends on how much I'm traveling. So yeah. as Billy knows, I'm constantly on the move. Um, yeah. Traveling up here, Mike. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Listen, it's on my list. It's on my list. I want to put the JK on a trailer and head up. Nice. I hope, so, you when, know what I, so when I Liz came up here, yeah, okay. she wasn't alone. No, I brought Miss Kaylee. Amazing Miss Kaylee. Dude, one of my best freaking friends. Look, there she is. Hello. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Hello. Okay. I'm going to move the screens around because now we got to make sure that Billy and Mike are on top and that, you know, Liz and I are down on the right there, oh, Now so. it's a party. Don't, don't. Okay, there we go. We're good now. <laughs> so, so Liz, real quick, um, before we change subjects, what kind of got you into firearms and shooting? Oh, gosh. Uh, you know, a long time ago... Um, a friend of mine who I went to school with needed some girl to shoot some stuff for him for some TV show. Uh, hilariously enough, it was called, um, God, it was kind of a spinoff on Mythbusters, but it was, I don't, gosh, I don't know. I don't remember what it's called, but anyway, I'm supposed to blow up a car. Uh, and so he took me to the range and took me shooting and kind of got me a little learned into that. Um, and when I was there, I just asked like, Hey, are you hiring? And then I started working <laughs> and that's basically oh, how that's it happened. Cool. And then, uh, I went to pick up my first firearm and basically got hired there and then worked with them at guns direct for six, six years. Uh, they're a great shop. So if you guys ever need anything, go check them out. Um, and then I don't know, I bounced out, bounced around through the firearms industry a little bit. Um, but yeah, so it was basically a friend of mine got me involved and I just immediately wanted to join in. So, Gotcha. And, yeah. you know, so I know in the off-road industry over the last 18 months, it's been absolute hell trying to get Anything. parts and inventory. And, you know, the, the gun industry is the same. I've had a upper on order for my 308 since probably... August of last year. Good so luck. far, the bolt carrier group's the only thing that's come in. Um, oh, that's so funny. Yeah, so I, I I think there's a lot of parallels, and are you seeing a lot of that? That's come. That's kind of commonplace I mean, now. Yeah. Um. Honestly, so most of the companies are picking their favorite companies to work with to ship stuff out to, and they kind of keep them stacked. Um. They haven't been very good with um shipping things out to everybody, but also they can't keep up with demand. Think about how many people have been introduced to either the sport or the idea of self-protection from all yes. the stuff that's been happening. Like whatever your opinion on it, it's caused people to get into, you know, second amendment. So um, they're the demand It's just, and the last time we had something, I think it was, well, maybe not the last time, but Sandy Hook was a big one where so many people were buying ammo uh, it was like Sandy Hook, and then there's election years are always big. And so the ammo companies bought new um, either machines or factories or whatever it was to keep up with demand. And then all of a sudden, everyone's like, okay, I got it. And then it stopped. So they all re realized like, okay, this is not a good idea. This is not how we're going to respond to it. So they're not going to do that again. They're just going to do their bare minimum and eventually it'll even out maybe. And there you go. Yeah. Yeah, I remember I used to be able to like hit Walmart on the way to work and buy a hundred round box of Winchester white box forty five for it was thirty two bucks. You pick uh -huh. up a new outfit while he was there too. <laughs> what? So you pick up a new outfit while you were there too. Hey, listen, you leave my three wolf moon shirt out of this. All those sick lumberjack flannels. Those will pay <laughs> off one day. So, um, Kaylee. Yes. Tell us, tell us how tell us how you fit in this equation. I don't know. I mean, other than producing this uh, this podcast here right now, I don't know how I fit into this. I'm like, Which, by I'm like the way, outsider. thank you very much. No uh, way. So she's going to be a, the next off road chick. Yeah. Too. So, yeah. quick introduction. We met through a, a mutual friend of ours, and we knew that the other one was super interested in adventure. So I'm like girl come with me on a road trip we're gonna go see billy and that's basically how this kind of awesome. formed i know i'm so stoked yeah, i had no idea I, how it was gonna go go same i um 
you know, when I was growing up and stuff, my parents were not into like camping or off-roading or anything like that. So I really have never been exposed to it, but I've always been interested and, in, you know, like seeing people go out there. And so when I met Liz and she just has this whole amazing setup um, with her Ford Ranger and everything, I was like, yeah, I'm super down. Like I'll go stay in the, in the camper on top of your truck. Like, let's do it. You know, and, Rooftop um, it was, <laughs> It was perfect timing because I was switching jobs and I had been working so much that I was like, I need to get out of town and just like completely disconnect. Um, and we totally did that. We spent an entire week going from Southern California all the way up to the tippy top of Washington to see Billy and then all the way back down. And it was amazing. So I am I caught the bug for sure. And I'm like every day looking to see what kind of um, off-road vehicle I'm going to get. So, so what, are you, what are you looking at? <laughs> okay. So Liz and I have, uh, have Don't talked say about Toyota. This. Don't say Toyota. Okay. So here's the thing. <laughs> it's going to be, it's, it's going to be bad. And everyone listening is going to hate me. Um, but I really want a forerunner and I know like for some reason I've never wanted a forerunner before. And I've always looked at forerunner people like douchebags. And um that's just the fifth the fifth you gen just guys. alienated right. like uh, yeah wow no, I definitely looked at them like that like oh Ailey my gosh, does not like represent little... the entire totality view of this podcast <laughs> they just like they're this little cult of themselves right but I really really want one so I guess I'm just gonna have to be a part of the cult. honestly the, the forerunner's I, not I've bad three of them not, yeah it's not bad it's not a bad way to go you know okay. it, they got like 10 year old technology in them. So there's nothing really to break. So, you know, yeah, nothing on parts. The front. yeah exactly. There you, go. So, yeah. you guys are just, you're continuing to sell me on it. I'm, I'm down. Yeah. I ordered parts yeah. from the dealership for the Land Cruiser. Yeah. They still yeah. had them. I got and new door handles. Cost, they cost an arm and a leg too, don't they? 58 bucks for new door handles, bro. I remember ordering hood, like the hatch struts for my 60 they were $85 a piece, my cost. And this was like 2003, 2002. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, it's like BMW level prices. Some yeah. Of it, well, yeah. The, cru the cruiser community has gotten pretty big and there's a lot of companies out there They're now. They're pops now. Yeah. So you can still pay for OE parts. You could still get like 90% of them. But there's a lot of companies making a lot of off stuff. Gotcha. I say go with the Forerunner, whatever yeah, makes you happy. Yeah, Forerunner is honestly not a bad day, way to go. Whatever happy makes you happy. Yeah, okay. I, okay. I, I thought I was going to get a lot of shit for it, but I'm oh, glad well, I Well, you'll that. still get a lot of shit for it, but I mean, but honestly. That's the whole thing. It doesn't matter what you choose. You're going to yeah. get shit for it by somebody. From somebody, yeah. yeah. Right. So, yeah. Like if you got a Jeep, the Toyota guys will give you shit. And if you get a Toyota, the Jeep guys will give you shit. But And I'm I mean, a Ford honestly, person, so you're all getting shit. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The Ranger is a really great truck, though. Dude, I mean, I'm so stoked on it. So I used to want either a Forerunner or, um, yeah. I So I was looking at different things. I got into a Taco and I got into a Forerunner. And I was severely disappointed. Because I didn't like, they're slower than I want. They're like, the cab is tiny, which I mean, if y'all love it, fine. Great for you. But as soon as I got in the Ranger and um, ours is a 19. So as soon as I got into that, it's like, oh, this is how it's supposed to be. There's space here, but it's not, you know, too big. I'm not like super far from my passenger if I have one. And then it picks up. Obviously, Billy knows I'm a little bit of a speed demon. Uh, so it's nice to have something that Kaylee knows too. Know. Yeah, it's Kaylee a knows too. Focus RS motor. That's all that's in that Ranger is a Focus RS motor. Yeah, but it like it yeah, responds great. great. Yeah, yeah, I mean it's awesome. it, it was literally a motor out of a like an all-wheel drive race bred hatchback and they go, "Oh, we'll just put this in the Ranger. People yeah. can deal with 300 horsepower, no problem." Exactly. Yeah. I am your target market. <laughs> yeah. And, <laughs> It's it's so funny because and we we talked about this on the podcast before, but the recurring theme is it seems to come up with every guest that we talk about trucks and Toyota forever and a day was the go to go to go to go to and then it's like all of a sudden Chevy's like oh well we have this Colorado mm -hmm. um, and oh well we're gonna do a ZR2 and then it was like Ford's like oh well we got this Ranger with a ten speed automatic and you know a turbo direct injected four cylinder that makes tons of power and you know toyota just kept kept slipping down and slipping down and slipping down and 
for 2022, what do they do? You get like a new color green that the dealer <laughs> will charge you five grand markup for. But, you know, I don't know. I don't want to beat up on the Toyota guys too much. Um, but just enough. Just, en- just enough. But I mean, the reality of the day, the Forerunner's great. You can fold the seat down, you know, the, the back seat down. You can put a mattress back there. You can sleep in it. It'll carry all your gear. It's not going to strand you. There's a dealership network nationwide if you ever do need anything. So it's honestly not a bad way to go. And there's a ton of aftermarket support for it. So that, that's pretty good. So you're going to, you're looking at, you're looking at getting a forerunner. Um, where is the first trip you want to take? Have you Gosh. given that some thought? Oh, dang. Um, yeah. Where are we going? That's, I was like, Liz <laughs> is the person on that. She's the one that plans all of our trips. I think she has like two or three in her back pocket plan. I just go along for the ride. See, this is, literally like our relationship is that I say, Hey, I want to do something. Can you plan it? And then she just plans something that's super incredible. So I'm the tag along for sure. Oh, then um, you, for guys now, should definitely, for now. you guys should for definitely now. hit Overland Expo P and W. March, right? March or is it June? I think it's July. I don't know. I just asked for all the days off. I should know. <laughs> nice. <laughs> So, I'll be there. Um, I bought my ticket. Did you get unpopular a opinion. Oh, yeah. You better have a Scottle. Scottles are amazing. I have yeah. like two. <laughs> wow. I just had, well, I just had a KOH. Uh, I was at KOH over the weekend. And one of the guys had a Scottle. But it was a homemade one with horseshoes welded on a plow disc as a Scottle. Oh, and he God. was cooking venison burgers mixed with pork sausage wow. with sauteed mushrooms garlic onion and jalapeno right it was like that the sounds, most am- oh it was amazing it was absolutely amazing and uh, you know i trash scottles and it's like oh you know it's, they make such a mess and they're a bitch to clean and they stay hot forever and but it's like actually it's the I, i'm not making pretty, I'm pretty not easy making, to clean they're yeah, just- i'm not making six burgers on my coleman stove it's just not gonna happen at least in a hurry so the funny thing is, I am a Coleman stove guy. I got a yep. new like slimline uh, burner now, but high elevation. When I did Coyote Flats and we were like twelve thousand feet, when we did Mount Rainier and we were like twelve thousand feet, those Coleman stoves, man, they don't cook. No. It, when it gets cold and when it gets high, it takes a lot. You go through so, a lot of propane. Not is a lot that- of oxygen up there. Part of that is you have to have the right fuel because some fuels are designed for high elevation. So if you have um, an apparatus that is not compatible with that type of fuel, then yeah, you're SOL. Oh, see, I didn't even know you had to have a different fuel for high altitude. I haven't even heard apparatus in like 20 years. (laughs) Oh, Lord. (laughs) Liz, we're teaching them new words. Yes. uh, I think last time I heard that was my grandma was yarning me a sweater. She was like... Go grab me that. One. Yeah, she's like, you? knitting. <laughs> she's like, go grab me that apparatus. Oh, there's another word for Billy to learn. Oh right my there. lord! Oh my gosh! You know that kind of brings it back to I am an old lady in so many ways. So I don't like big groups of people. So I don't think I will be doing another of those uh, big event things. Oh god! She will because I want to experience one. As you oh should. god, you don't. <laughs> I'll see you in July. I'll see so... you in a day. Speaking okay. of big Maybe cluster that. clusterfuck events, um, I I was just at KOH. Right. Uh, I hate crowds. Mm-hmm. Likewise, I hate crowds and I hate idiots. That <laughs> combines like the the two the of the biggest groups you'll ever put together in one place. And I mean, the amount of people out there, it's just it's absolute insanity, right? So, are you just talking about the KC influencers, or are you talking about people that attended koh well there's a lot of influencers out there and then there's well, some influencers well, duh they're yeah. all doing prep to go park yeah the hard park um i was busy uh you know dan dan was racing so he did every man challenge and f- uh with the 4800 car on friday so, so we started fifth um took first overall and first in class and our closest contender was actual physical third and we had to wait an 
hour at the finish line for third place to come across the finish line. Yeah. Beat him by half an hour on corrected time. Um, everything was fantastic. Awesome high. You know, Dan did it. If it's one thing Dan can do, he can drive. So the next race was going to be on Saturday um, for uh, the whiskey anymore, Liz. What? So that doesn't look like whiskey anymore. Dude, you got to hydrate. <laughs> yeah, got to hydrate. So, you know, so we were supposed to race on Saturday and the transmission in the car ended up being smoked and it just wasn't going to make the race. So, you know, we were out there. Everything's covered in dust. Uh, I'm sleeping in a camper, luckily for me. It provided some warmth because it was 15 degrees. Everything's covered in dust. I still have dust coming out of my nose. I'm more of the person of I'd rather grab a close group of friends, go out to the desert, hang out for the weekend, do some trail riding, do some shooting, sit by the campfire, have a few drinks, mm -hmm. burn a steak on a scottle, maybe the Coleman stove. I do not um, burn my food. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, no, I, you know, but it depends on how much you've had to drink. So I don't like big groups of pe people overland. Pacific Northwest sounds like it'll be that same thing, but I do encourage yeah. you, Kaylee, that you should try it at least once. Okay, I'll, once. I'll take you for a day. If you want to stay the whole time, you know, at least we'll have two rigs by then, so it'll be great. You, you so know she me well enough you to know can I'm go not. Else. Yeah, you know I'm not going to want to stay more than one day. <laughs> no, well, the cool thing about that one is, so it's going to be in Bend, right? Yeah. So you you have a million places between at least it's not uh, Portland here and right. <laughs> <laughs> overland expo under the over well, at least if you go to portland all the tents overpass are already set expo. up for you <laughs> overpass <laughs> expo yeah copyright that yeah <laughs> Yo, that'd be a sweet shirt to make overpass, overpass expo you should you make have it. like a freeway bridge with a bunch of tents underneath it yes. i was gonna say you gotta put tents on forerunner oh yeah forerunner oh, with a tent but like a 1980s forerunner with like a yes tarp. yes what the hell's wrong with it. 1980s forerunners no, you had one. Perfect. It was a pile of shit. <laughs> Dude, mine was nice. He hates a consistent. All I remember is <laughs> getting stuck on a rock and the the body flexed so bad you couldn't get the transfer case back into gear. But that was a big rock. <laughs> it was a big rock. It was, it was a really big rock. <laughs> I was really yeah. giving it a I was really giving it a college try. Yeah, you sure were. And then My you had no recovery. Wasn't working. <laughs> you had no recovery points, so we had to drag you that off part. of the boulder oh, by, by the, the shackle. shackle. Oh, gosh. <laughs> hey, listen, I never claimed to be perfect. No. So this event's in Bend, Oregon? Yeah. Listen, I'm not pitching or promoting it. I just... Bend is really a beautiful spot if you get some time to go through there with yeah, like I the got lava caves there. and the river. He's just yeah. trying to find a middle ground for us all to meet up. That is yeah. a good middle ground. Yeah, middle ground to Mike is like San Francisco. <laughs> no, middle ground to me would be like it's the Kahuna Pass. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. So. No, we just went to, like a big group of us went to the one in um, Arizona. Oh, did and you And it was just a shit show. Yeah. Yeah. So like two years ago when I did start the Rocklander project, I had bought tickets and all that stuff and then COVID hit and then they kept oh, yeah. pushing it back and then I didn't go. So I just, I want to go once more. So like the PNW one is just, there's not a lot that comes up this way. Sure. And that one's Which like, is a, so weird. Cause it's so beautiful. I know, dude, it's I know one of my but, favorite places to explore. There's not like as much offering that I'm aware of, but you know, like there's but some I mean, stuff. You could put like Oregon and, and Washington combined and you got half the people California does. So yeah. if you're going to throw a massive event, you're going to be where the people are. I mean, that's the only thing I can think of. Right. You know? Yeah. They just don't think they'll get enough people to come up there. They must. But on top of that, you have to have a large enough space for the event because there are so many vendors, so many people trying to camp there and they make so for much sure. money on camping. Um, I don't know those ticket prices. Twenty five hundred dollar, five thousand dollar vendor booths. See, that's my other qualm with the whole thing is I don't want to spend how much money to go to a town like it's basically a mobile town. It's a bunch of people. I I go camp to leave town. I'm not trying to go right. to another town. <laughs> yeah. For sure. But yeah. I do get it because if you, if they have new stuff, yeah, it's... it's pretty exciting. But. Write that word down, qualm. Oh, yeah. That, I, already, I already put it in here. I was yeah, there. That's three, words, that's three words of the episode. Are you yeah. taking Mental Rolodex. Rolodex? Put that one in there, too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Lexicon, you know. Lexicon. Oh, man. <laughs> She's going college on your ass. Over, oh, yeah. Overpass <laughs> Expo? Overpass Expo. Dude, I'm telling you, make I that shirt. That I'm, telling, I'm writing that down, too. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. I'm telling you, that's that's a game changer right there. Yeah, that that would you would you would make tons of money off that shirt. Yeah, we already know hey, like Liz, ten people that what, buy it. Uh, what whiskey are you drinking? I was literally just thinking about that. Hey, yeah. she's perfect. Okay, <laughs> so hey, Kaylee, yeah, what? So she's one of the biggest the show in the right direction. <laughs> so one of the things I was really upset about, besides Billy moving for you know his moving sake, um, but being on the show i was so excited and then i don't even get to come and try you know a guest drink a guest beverage you guys didn't even like say hey buy this and we'll talk about it next time now you know for your next episode but so i brought one of my own favorites i feel like i just got yelled at <laughs> you yeah. did get yelled at by the the school marm so lagavulin uh this one is the single malt scotch whiskey it's been double matured um and this is like so distilled 2006 and bottled 2021. It's Islay, so it's yeah. from the okay. Uh huh. All right, so it's on the islands. Yes. So uh, something that they talk about is that it's like it's it's very peaty, very smoky, which is yeah. amazing. But they also oh. talk about how it has like that um, the sea spray, so it's got kind of like a salty bit to it. Oh, it's so good. Um, and then I was reading up on it a little bit, um, but they're they're oak casks. And then they're finished in like a wine conditioned cask. So it's oh okay. They're tasty. Yeah, it actually sounds really good. Yeah, you're so missing it's out. Like super I would have brought it as a gift. Coffee. Yeah. Uh-huh. I don't not like I, not overpowering. It's it's very listen, pleasant. Like a Lafroig. Put a cigarette out on my forehead at this point. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> so. Lizzie, we're saying that one's really smoky. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah but yeah. you don't like mezcal, right? So I'm okay with mezcal, but no, it is not one of my favorites. It's not something I lean towards. Um, the first time, so a friend of mine bought it. We went to uh, High Time out in, what is it, Costa Mesa? That's Basically where I got Mesa. my Jefferson's High Times. Nice. There you go. Um, and so he bought it, and he was kind enough to let me taste it. And I was like, okay, well, now I have to buy one. <laughs> so I did get a different batch than he did, and it's still excellent. So it's, I mean... Girl, when you come over, you're getting some of this. Yeah, too. I'm gonna, I'm gonna taste it next time. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Yeah, sorry, I'm Billy. Taste it next Did, time. Didn't she boycott an old fashioned with you and I when she was up here? So, um, I don't <laughs> drink anymore. Mm -hmm. Um, I am almost two years of not drinking, almost two years. Um, but Billy, I did try the scotch mm -hmm. that you had at your house oh that's oh yeah that's right when i got suckered into taking everyone's shots i remember yes, that because, suckered in, uh, i'm pretty sure you offered and then did it regardless <laughs> of what we had to say <laughs> yeah because we both said like we'll just take a tiny tiny sip like we don't want a lot and he poured like full-on glasses but so i don't i don't have it sounds about right a full glass of anything i was um, optimistic mike <laughs> mm -hmm. well I, I remember going to your birthday and all of a sudden like all these tequila shooters show up on the table of Patron in, a, in like a basket of limes and we're doing tequila shooters. And my, my poor wife is just staring at me in disgust going, Oh, this is going to be a really long afternoon because it's only like one thirty. Yeah. Oh yeah. Trust me. That was, that was a long night. <laughs> and then it was round two and then it was round three and she drove me home. And that's all I pretty much remember. For the record, I've only been drunk once in my life. So <laughs> Pin what drop. you guys get all silent on that? I drink for the side. They're just like, no. That was funny. Yeah. That was really uncomfortable. Good yeah. job, guys. I just, how do I react when I'm being lied to? Billy really blacked know. out when you said that. He's like, I don't, yeah, I don't. Did. It does not compute. He's like, I don't understand what that means. Hey, <laughs> no judgment here. Hey, I, no. actually did, I did dry November or January. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> You're so drunk you don't remember. Right. <laughs> and it's February 7th. And what are we doing right now? Listen, I told everybody. I said I'll have I'll have whiskey tonight for the show. But yeah, I didn't drink. So are you food. going? Are you going back dry after for only between podcasts or with? Yeah, I mean, I don't see. I don't have a set plan. All right, 
All I'm saying Do is I was I was getting ever? <laughs> yeah. There was a nice yeah, right? Even even my trip, even Cheers. my 30 3400 mile trip, I was searching for campsites every night. Oh, oh for so, the record, I'm going to interrupt real quick again. So, yeah, Kaylee and I our first trip. So, first off, we had only spent like, I don't know, two separate 6 hour um I don't know, batches. Basically, we took two drives together, six hours. So we'd we'd hung out with groups, but that was our only time hanging out alone. And then we take this massive road trip together. Not a single thing goes wrong. Everything, like, well, when things went wrong, we enjoyed the shit out of it. So, like, you know, me dumping an entire roof nest top full of water on myself when we were closing the rooftop tent. But other than that, um, so she was such a trooper. Uh, the way that I typically camp, I will find a spot on GPS and hope that it's, you know, viable for camping. Um, but I didn't know how she would respond. So the first night we stayed in a campsite, but every other night after that, we either stayed, you know, we stayed with Billy one night, but uh, we just found GPS coordinates and like camp and she was freaking amazing. And I'm super stoked and I can't wait to see all the stuff that you do in the future. Just like, awesome. had to throw no, that, that was. I loved doing that. Like, and I asked her to like, show me, how do you look up the campsites? Like, how do you, you know, and she's like, I just look at a uh, satellite and see an open space. And she kind of taught me that whole thing. And I loved doing that. There was only a couple times where I was like, this would suck if like bears come around, but hopefully like <laughs> we're protected. You know, we were protected. We had, mm -hmm. <laughs> we had our tools, our supplies to keep us safe. So it was super fun. I had such a blast and I'm definitely mm -hmm. one of those people. that's just kind of like, I just want to go with the flow. Show me what you do. And if there's something that I'm like, I can't handle this, then I, I guess we'll say it, but I can't imagine anything that I would actually say that to you. I'm down. No, I'm she has everything. everything. Yeah. One of the silliest so moments that I love so much, by the way, is uh, there was one night we, so we went to one spot and we really liked it, but then it started snowing and we're like, eh, we don't really want to deal with this right now. So we went a little bit lower elevation, but it was still freezing. Uh, so we're bundled up in our sleeping bags and we figure out how we can put an iPad in um we had like a net on the roof of the rooftop uh tent and so we just put the ipad in there like bundled up and watched up <laughs> before bed because you awesome. don't want to sit outside you know when you're that yeah. cold yeah. so just bundle up and we, watch a movie yeah we had awesome. like we had a fire until we had mm -hmm. no more wood which was great but like you know it was probably eight o'clock if that seven o'clock or so and <laughs> we we're like oh crap what are we gonna do now and luckily we had service so um, mm -hmm. as soon as we figured that out, we were like, we have service, we have an iPad, we can watch Netflix. Like, what are we going to watch? So we go in there and, and yeah, I think, uh, when we went to bed, it started at like, I think it was 23 degrees or something like that. Mm -hmm. It had to have gotten down to 15, 15. Yeah. Yeah. Something totally. like that. But at one point I woke up and I was pretty warm. Like Liz got me she has a great sleeping bag she had like the extra thermal so i was good except for my neck for some reason my neck was so cold so i took my socks off in the middle of the night and made a scarf out of it it was wow perfect. i was good after that yeah See, i love that I, yeah I, I i can i can do it when i have to mm -hmm. she's about <laughs> yeah, there so is fun. there is this thing especially now with social media like when you go camping and it is uncomfortable, it's almost like uncool just to say like, man, it's cold. I just want to go to sleep. You know what I mean? Like all of a sudden you start to feel right. guilty. Like you're supposed to be like doing epic stuff or taking pictures of all the stars or doing time-lapse videos. And the reality is when the kids and I finally just caught our groove and we were doing like 15 different trips a year, it's like, dude, nobody wants to be up freezing ass with no right. fire, especially since most of our, our time was during the burn ban. Oh. Uh, couldn't even have fires. And it was like, people were burning them anyways. And I'm like, yeah, it's going to be me that catches the forest on fire and right. just get grilled. <laughs> or get blamed so, for it. Yeah. So I didn't. And it was like, man, it was nice. The sun would go down. We'd kick it for a few minutes. And then mm -hmm. we would just go inside. We would download on the tablet, you know, because we go places where there weren't service. Mm -hmm. So right. we would just download. We were movies, lucky. Right super lucky yeah but we we would go places where you know we just download the movies ahead of time and that's what we would do it was easier for me to fall asleep that way knowing the kids were warm and comfortable and entertained sure. and i'd mm -hmm. pass out and then wake up at three in the morning wide-eyed 
you know, and then I'm like, I'm drinking coffee out in the morning when the sun's coming up. That to me, the, the sun rises and the morning starting was my, is my favorite part always. Oh yeah. Our last night of that trip, uh, we came back via, uh, Big Sur and I had found an epic spot on GPS and, uh, we will not share it with anyone. No, sorry guys. Y'all are as well on that too. Um, but we found right, this we'll amazing keep ours from you. Uh, hey, 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 off the air, I can share with people I care about who I know won't screw it up, you know, yeah, that's the whole yeah. thing. And you know what, I 100% don't even blame you. I mean, we've seen we've seen all the damage that's happened to spots and, mm -hmm. you know, driving back from King of Hammers, going down the 247 and you just see all the, you know, all the rock outcroppings that are covered in yeah. graffiti. It's, it's, it's disgusting. It's nice. And it's like I want to go out there with a sandblaster and clean it all off, but you know, it's just going to show right back up again because it's literally right off the road. So, you so drag yeah. that beard across those rocks and clean it up. Oh, <laughs> uh, maybe yours. His looks a little more kept. Yeah. <laughs> you just well, his, his won't do any damage because it's all patchy and thin. I was going to say he would do through. more damage to his face than to anything else. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Mm. Say it, Billy. Wow. Mm. Nice. Nice. Stings a little bit, but whatever. I'm going to give a shout out to my friend, Michelle. She's with, she like runs Rigs and Brews. She's got this little thing that she does. She's uh, setting up another cleanup. She'll randomly do cleanups and meets where people go out and um, obviously clean up the areas that she likes to do um, hang out in. So we started, I think we did one in Joshua Tree already, but she's got another one coming up, but Honestly, more power to the people who um, set those up. You yeah, get people for sure. Oh, yeah. At these areas. It is. It's a lot of work, man. It's a well, lot of work. All the, all the forms, the liability. The tree one, yeah. And they took like two or three 40-yard dumpsters. I was there for that. Around. Yeah. And like a whole. Yeah, Liz and I were there for that, Mike. Where were oh, you? Oh, yeah, you were there. I forgot. Yeah. I wasn't allowed yeah. to talk to you. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, there was technical difficulties there. Worked and out so, well for me. <laughs> so yeah, tea. yeah. Plug, uh, plug whoever you want to plug, and we can always put. Um, I mean, Kaylee, you help us. We can put links in the comments for uh, absolutely at the oh, episode. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Liz, absolutely. message me because I could even put it into the show right now so people yeah, can look see at, it, but I don't know what it is. Nice. Okay. <clears throat> put it in the private chat. Yeah, um, this I'll producer finish. shit's gonna go. It's gonna go well for us. Yeah, you better I, start paying up. <laughs> yeah, I told her. Huge bill. I uh, was gonna finish where Liz was going with that. Um, with being in Big Sur, and we found this really great spot. And I, I agree with you, Billy, that people have made the social media part of it what it's about. But I've always been the type of person like I don't care about the social media. You can go on my social media, and you're gonna see I have like not very many pictures, um, because I like to experience this stuff. I want to make sure that I'm not, I'm not putting my phone in front of my face every time I want to see something that's epic or cool or whatever, right? I want to actually experience it and have a memory of it in my own brain, not on my phone. Yeah, and for so, sure. um, when we were there, uh, we got there at night and we got there. It was super dark. Couldn't really see anything, but we found a spot. Our spot was amazing. We were secluded from everyone, which was great. Um, especially because when we woke up in the morning and we actually like drove out from our spot, we realized how many people were actually there. I mean, there were probably a hundred. Um, that was nuts. I don't know about a hundred. I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> Hundred over the entire mountain, probably. Sure. Hundred people. Um, but no, there was just like little pop-ups everywhere of people just all over the canyon. Um, yeah. which was really crazy. But what was great about that is uh I slept in a little bit and Liz is an amazing photographer. So if you haven't seen her stuff, go to her Instagram at Miss Elizabeth Keller. Um, she's an amazing photographer. So she took pictures and she showed me in the morning. It was just beautiful. It was just like the rolling hills with the mist coming, you know, going out from the ocean. And it was so pretty. So actually just being there and experiencing that type of stuff, like that's why I fell in love with it, is getting mm -hmm. to get to a spot in the middle of the night when you don't know what it looks like and then waking up to something incredible. It that's is, cool. That is 
there is something about that that's such a trip and especially when it, you roll in at at dark mm-hmm. and you have no idea what's around you until you wake up it's right. such a trip it's that such an awful feeling yeah exactly it can be so awesome it can be a little scary at night depending there was a time uh we were driving through joshua tree and um i don't know if you guys have explored joshua tree the off-road trails but there's back by the mines and all these other i don't know i don't know if they're quarries or what but um 62 oh gosh where was it east end of the park i've been out past the east end of the park and south of, I think, uh, the 60, I think it's a 62. So it's All very much, there. yeah, there's, well, there's a bunch of mines, so I'm not sure. I don't remember exactly where it was. I thought it was closer to um, Palms, 29 Palms. Okay. Um, but um, we're going up this steep, crazy thing, and this is probably midnight because I was coming in from Phoenix. And all of a sudden, it just goes into black. And I'm like, I need to stop real quick. I don't want to keep going forward. I need to make sure that I know what's in front of my truck, which is not a common feeling, but I, I'm trying to listen to my gut more often these days. Um, so we get out and look and there's a drop off. So if you're going super late and I've got a ton of lights, but if you have the wrong angle with your truck and you can't see over the front of it and we could have literally died. So while I think it's awesome to show up in darkness and then wake up to the beauty, you know, it has its dangers. So be careful, people. Be safe. <laughs> Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But yeah, it's easy to get disoriented. And, and if you're unfamiliar with your surroundings, it's yeah. really easy to get disoriented, especially yeah. out in the desert. Um, mountains, I think, is a little bit harder just because geographically you have a lot more peaks and, you know, cliffs and stuff. But mm-hmm. like out in the desert, it's like a vast nothingness. And, mm-hmm. you know, you don't have as many you do have line of sight markers like, you know, like hills, mountains, this and that. You can kind of get your bearings, but at night you don't get any of that. No. So, um, you know, I, I've always been a big proponent of researching and knowing where you're going, but it's also, like you said, very cool to just kind of wake up and, you know, open the tent and just like have that view in the morning. Is that why you yeah. never go anywhere? Cause you're just always researching it. Is that is that why we don't go anywhere together? Or uh, well, well like I, I, we, I guess we're, well we're an hour in and it looks like Billy's three drinks in. So wow. Get, so yeah. <laughs> wow. No, I don't go anywhere because my best friend moved away. Um, oh, I'm the best friend uh, again. Yeah. Oh, how cute! Oh, yeah. Look at yeah. him looking at that silver lining. <laughs> Wait, we are That's talking it? about Billy, right? We are. Talking about <laughs> Billy. Okay, Billy. You know. I'm just gonna tell you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get in the truck one of these days, loaded full of gear, and I'm just gonna he- I'm just gonna head up north with my wife. And I, yeah, I will have the to gas tank on that truck. You're making here in one tank. Funny enough, I want to get a 50 gallon Titan tank in it. So yeah, it makes I sense. Probably go thousand miles on the highway without having to refill at that point. So you'd almost make it here. Almost make it there. It sucked to fill it up. Uh, I just, I filled up tonight. I found 485 a gallon for diesel, hmm. but getting off the freeway at Beach Boulevard, it was 515 a gallon. And I'm just like, what happened? Like, <laughs> we know what happened. We know what happened, and we can't talk about it because no. our podcast will get shadow man. But listen, uh, you bought that truck during COVID. It's not like the high gas prices were brand new. No, no, my, the gas prices were cheap. When, when I bought that truck, but you know, I, I really don't care, but I I've already done the math and I figured it's probably 600 bucks in diesel to get up there and back. So it's not too bad. It's like round trip plane tickets. So, um, that's, and that's the ultimate question, right? Fly up there. Well, yeah. So fly up there and you get up there in two hours or drive. I love the road. I love the road trip. I love the scenery um the wife she never listens to this podcast not so much um that might be safer for you in the long run yeah, <laughs> yeah. well i was just fly her up and then you know pick her up at the airport there and she just gets on the plane and gets off and happy wife happy life and you know everybody's good but i really i do i really want to get up there um and you know the whole eastern oregon thing doesn't actually sound like that big of a um you know, sounds like a pretty good thing to do. So yeah, I think it's easy and fun. 
What's that? Billy, Billy, you're committed. You're going. Yeah, I already bought the tickets. Yeah, and I already got the time off work. I was oh, supposed sure. to go to that. I and was supposed to go free. to that and handle Overland rally that um, was up in Idaho. God, October. But it's at Bonner's Ferry, which is the Canadian border. And I'm just like, yeah, I don't know about that. That's like all the way up into Idaho in the middle of nowhere. Tow the Jeep up there. That Then I got to worry about stopping with the Jeep on the trailer. You understand that I'm like 20 miles from the Canadian border, right? Yeah, but you're straight up. You're not up and over. It's it's a, it's a commitment. It is a commitment. <laughs> right? So... <laughs> so Liz, how did you get into we we covered the shooting? How did you get into uh, the other shooting? How did you get into photography? Uh, so photography, that's an even easier story. Uh, I needed extra credits. <laughs> in oh, school. is that what it was? I think it I don't remember if it was middle or high school, but I needed extra credits. And then as I was taking my photography class, I'm like, oh, this will be easy. I'm like, oh, I like this. And actually I'm pretty good at it. So sweet. This is kind of what I want to do. Um and so over the years, I've done it, so I, I have um, a degree in photography, um, but on top of that, I've worked on film and TV sets. I've done some um, catalog stuff and uh, some product stuff. Some just I sell a lot of prints, so I have a ton of like actual canvases and metal prints and paper prints that I you know sell to folks, but I got into it because I needed an easy class, and then I was like, oh, I love this. So, so wait until so... I print. Well, do buy you, it. Buy one. Yeah. Do you have to support her? Jeez, dude. Like, exactly. You pay for your sir, Mr. Stuff. I don't want free free influencer parts. Hey, can I get a can I get a photo print? Are we are we really <laughs> going there? I felt I felt like I earned. Uh, <laughs> so, so, so Liz, so you obviously everybody sh today shoots digital, right? Yes. But do you get into any of the like actual like film film stuff? Have you ever done anything with that? So yeah, I what, learned what on apparatus film. do you use to do that? <laughs> I think I it's called a 35 film. millimeter camera. So yes, yes. I had a Nikon um FA that my father let me borrow, um, which I would still have today, but he took it back. So I'll take it back again. Oof. Just watch. But so the problem is I love film and people say, Oh, you can do anything with digital. But honestly, there is something entirely different about shooting on a film camera. Yeah, um, it has a there's, soul. Yeah, there's a love <laughs> yeah. there that just doesn't come through in digital, um, which digital is incredible. Don't get me wrong, but it's just a different thing. Um, the downside is I started uh, developing at home and I lost, I don't know how many roles in a row and I got very disenchanted. So I have mm. not done film in unfortunately quite a long time. I was even printing, I was doing black and white and I was doing color in school. Gotcha. Um, so I have not unfortunately done film in quite a while, except um, a friend of mine. So two friends. So Jess, redhead Jess, which a lot of people know because her truck is freaking badass and she's badass. But her boyfriend, John, who is also a friend of mine, got me a um, one of those Polaroid cameras for my birthday. So that's as close to film as I've been uh, in recent years, unfortunately. Gotcha. We should give we should give a shout out to a uh, home girl who oh yeah uh huh who so we... <laughs> the best so story sad. ever Mike oh wait which one well okay we're gonna give a shout oh, out yeah. to Michelle oh, oh. so with rigs and brews um, yes because she does so much work um I don't know I threw in some capitals that may or may not be there but she does a lot of great stuff check her out check her stuff up um we get together and have brews obvi. Um, and I think the next one's going to be in the middle of nowhere, which is great, uh, instead of like urban stuff. So we can get rid of some of those mall crawlers. Just kidding. If you enjoy your truck, I don't care how you enjoy it as long as you're enjoying it, but it'll be nice. Cause it'll be, you know, somewhere out there, which is what I like. Yeah. So. You got to earn it. There is a little bit of earning it. Everything you know what? doesn't, everything doesn't uh, have to be Alabama Hills. So I, oh my God, they actually got married in Alabama Hills and it was stunning and I got some great photos and I do not do wedding photography, but I did it for them because I love them. So they're very lucky. Uh, but, um, but honestly, if something makes you happy, I, I don't care if, oh, you're going to throw money at something. I don't know if I'll agree with that, but if it makes you happy, I don't give a crap. Enjoy well, yourself. listen, we're, we're not here to tell people what to do. Yeah, you are. Well, we can tell, no. 
<laughs> just kidding. Well, we're no. telling just people to drink you more. You. you should well, drink this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that actually sounds really good. No, it's delicious. It sounds better than that the, swill, the swill that Mike's drinking. So oh, my Jefferson's Ocean. Yeah, how dare you? <laughs> you don't have to buy it. Heated <laughs> palate over there of like dirty Seattle whiskey. Listen, so you don't have to buy it, but we'll link up and you can have some. What? what? I, I like how the bottle looks, so I bought it. Okay, you haven't been up here yet, but I'm going to tell you right now, there's one liquor store in the whole county, all right? It's not, is it a, is it a, do you have liquor laws there in Washington? Yeah, they only sell it in the grocery stores. Really? I found a, yeah. Yeah. No so, way. Listen, I don't know. Someone, yeah, someone's gonna jump in and be like, "Shut up, bro! I got this super down low liquor store in the middle of the woods." But oh, I'm when, sure, right? Moon type. Yeah, well, I found one liquor store in all of Bellingham, and he's got a lot of whiskey. So listen, this is the first. Oh, there amendment. you go. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know, when I was back in Tennessee, um, I actually went to go get beer on sunday and found that the actual they, they put a chain through the liquor case or through the cooler and yeah they apparently, do that in fontana too dude it's so people don't well, do apparently beer runs. You can't buy, well apparently you can't buy it on sundays and there was that whole thing of like you can buy wine or beer but liquor you have to go to like a state liquor store and i found it so funny that like it if you're so stupid that you can't plan a day in advance to buy your liquor on Saturday for Sunday instead of going to church, probably, you know, you're not going to go very far in life. The other thing I thought that was hilarious is Jack Daniels, their distillery is actually in a dry county where they're not allowed to sell alcohol at all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think they're not the only ones who are like that. I think there's probably a couple of yeah, companies that are the same way. I mean, think about yeah. it. Some of these um, firearms or am ammunition companies, they're in the middle of not so friendly oh, territory. Connecticut? Uh, who was it? Remington that was in Connecticut forever? Uh, gosh, I don't even remember. And which iteration? Like, who owned them? <laughs> right. So, yeah. Yeah, true. Um, I guess. The so moral of the know, story is people, listen to Mike, plan your drinking liquor. out. Right. It's like meal prep. Mike meal preps his alcohol. He's like, you know, it's closed on Sunday. You, you better, better put it. You better put it in the fridge on Saturday. Yeah. Plan in advance. Go Otherwise, to that you're not going far in life. I think Utah's similar, right? They have they're closed on Sundays or something. Yeah, it was something yeah, it weird. If you order drinks, you have to order food too, and if you order a double, they bring it to you in two glasses. What? Yeah, they, that's a they, thing. They get a pass because they make High West. High West is fantastic. It kind of reminds me of the like you are not allowed to walk your sheep I down the High street West on Sundays at two o'clock. Like the weirdest laws. Like it has to be in two glasses. Okay, yeah. sure. Well, it, it has to do with I think how much they can pour at a time, so they have to bring it to you in two glasses. It's the weirdest thing. Yeah, it's a lot of extra dishes. They got some strange liquor laws. Like you can't like you can't walk into a bar in Utah and order an old fashioned. You have to order food. And an old fashioned. They you know, don't want well, you to get I too mean, drunk. They were, it's Utah. They were doing that with COVID too for a while. It was like you couldn't order a drink unless you had food. Oh well, my the god! Could be were, open unless they had food or something. The that's Mexican when they restaurant. Were, um, give it, letting you take alcohol to go. Oh yeah. So you couldn't I, just come. You couldn't just go to a restaurant and order alcohol to go. You had to get food and alcohol to go. But that's a law that should never go away. It's not it's going away. Able... California's kept it. It's going to be a thing now. And so I was so happy when my away, Mexican food restaurant, mm -hmm. which, which one, Liz? So they have, it's one of those laws where they have an expiration date, but they'll just keep pushing it. But oh, it technically it. does expire, but they are going to keep extending it because honestly, oh, they make too much money. Well, yeah, you like I can ride emergency. my beach cruiser. I, I could literally, when COVID happened and I could ride my beach cruiser to the Mexican restaurant, pick up my carnitas plate and a Cadillac margarita in a styrofoam cup, put it in the cup holder on my handlebars and ride back to my oh, house. I have like, it's like, this is where we're at in society. Everything's falling apart, but I can go get a Cadillac margarita in a styrofoam cup. Yeah, Mike was like the white Debo riding around Long Beach. On his beach with freezer. my flannel on. <laughs> so I don't remember if it's North Carolina or Louisiana, but uh, one of those spots 
They have the drive-through daiquiris. Louisiana. Yeah. Yep, Louisiana. What are we doing? I love it. Yeah. yeah. Listen, New Orleans is something else. Like, it's really – if you haven't experienced it, you should go experience it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's, it's That's definitely good. on my bucket list. But I have heard, you know, when you talk to certain people, it, it's it's an experience. Uh and some love it and some don't. Yeah, I loved it. Yeah. And I'm not a big drinker. You know that. So I went and I had, you know, a couple drinks here and there because I like the flavor. But I still enjoyed the heck out of myself. So it, it doesn't just have to be about the booze. Although well, The history, the people watching, the food. There's so many reasons to go. The ghost uh, tours. Ghost tours. Mm-hmm. Like, it's so crazy seeing the cemeteries. And these cemeteries have been there for hundreds and hundreds of years. Mm-hmm. And because New Orleans is basically a swamp, they can't bury people. Everyone's right. above ground. So you have, like, stacks on stacks on stacks of, like, just above ground crypts. It's the craziest thing. And the, the Airbnb that we stayed in was built in, like the early to mid 1800s and was flooded during Katrina rebuilt Mm -hmm. and we stayed there. It was cheap. We got on the little trolley, took us right down to bourbon street. It's great. Like if you can go, I highly recommend it. Don't worry, Kaylee. It'll be on our like world tour. So I'm going to take her on almost all of my trips. I'm going on a trip this coming weekend that I'm not taking her on. Except for one coming up. So Mm -hmm. I'm not going on that because I need to swap out the Leafs on the truck. So I'm going to be a passenger in Jess's truck, unfortunately. Ah, Okay, well, then that's fine. I should have taken you anyway. (laughs) What Leafs are you doing on the truck? So we actually have custom ones from Atlas. Um, Oh, okay. So uh, I threw on the decked, and now they're like, Mm. yeah. My go-to on the Colorado, Tacoma, and Ranger have been the Old Man Emu Springs. Okay. They actually work. They actually work pretty good. If you're having a custom set made, even better. Yeah. Um, yeah, but definitely, like, the leaf springs on those trucks are lacking. Same thing with the with the Tacomas. Any of the mid mm-hmm. trucks, as soon as you start loading them up, yeah. you know, racks, deck bed boxes are great, rooftop tent, and then all of a sudden. <laughs> all of that. <laughs> You know, you have a reverse, you know, reverse leveling kit is needed. <laughs> uh-huh. Oh, my goodness. So where is your next trip, Liz? Uh, so um, I am going with Jess, Redhead Jess again. Um, We're going to run out to meet up with our friend Madison. Uh, she's throwing a Galentine's trip. Uh, and so we're going to be out from like, I don't know, this weekend, basically. We're gonna, I think it's this weekend, right? Oh my lord, it's already February, guys. Um, and we'll come back, I think, Sunday. Um, but yeah, so Arizona, I don't remember exactly where she is. Uh, that's the thing. When someone else plans it, I'm like, yeah, cool, let's go. Right? Uh, Send me the coordinates. Then right. the dates creep up on you, and all of yeah. a sudden here we are. And, and I've been nonstop. <laughs> like I've I've been um shooting, I've been at the beach the last three days, which is phenomenal and crazy. But I was even on uh the range today. And I've just been like nonstop, nonstop. So I don't even know if I have time to pack. I'm just going to throw a bunch of stuff in a bag and be like, huh, this will be great. Sometimes that makes the best trips. Dude, True. every trip is the best trip. Well, no, this trip with Kaylee is kind of the best trip. So <laughs> I think mean- anytime any of us can get away from life um, and kind of re- hit that reset button, you know, it, friends are friends. We have our, you know, we have the chance to spend time with our friends. I think it's all good. Um, Mm -hmm. It's that reset button that all of us need in our daily lives to kind of refresh and, you know, kind of find focus, get back to center, um, get back to what's important, try not to work ourselves, you know, into an early grave. Um, Life is stressful. We definitely need that time to re-energize and restore our batteries. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that being said, Billy, I know you're kind of getting settled down. What you've, really in the last couple of years kind of lived on your trips and with that reset time. So what, and I'm kind of, I've kind of been curious and, you know, now that you have the twins and a nine to five or a what, seven to five, uh, seven to six, 
job, like what do you have on the horizon to kind of get out and get out there with the kids and reset? Do you have any trips planned? Uh, anything so, coming up? Right now, it's still pretty cold up here. Probably colder than I want to be just spending the night. But I started looking today at um, Cascadia National Park. Yes. So Cascadia National Park North is up by me. So a few hours away. But North of you or because I'm trying no, to think geographically. Call it, call it North because there's also Cascadia National Park in Oregon. Okay. So we're just north of Oregon. Gotcha. Washington. Okay. In case you don't understand yeah. geography, yeah, yeah, Washington right. is north is, is of Oregon. Oregon. Washington yes. is it's Oregon's US. hat and yeah. California is Oregon's underwear. So there you go. There we so, go. So I actually, coincidentally, I started looking today. And if I want to stay in the national park, everything's booked already. Don't stay in the national sure. park. There's so listen, many rules. Stay I in know, the forest. I, I know there is, but listen, you get you first. No, you first touch. <laughs> <laughs> Burrs. Do we Burrs. always stay? So you camp in the national forest and then you go into the national park for a day and explore. And then you right. go back to the forest where freedom so, is. <laughs> but I don't, I don't know the area. So at least when you start looking at the national parks and the campgrounds, it gives you an idea of where the things are to do. And it gives mm -hmm. you a map of what amenities are around. So if I camp sure. outside of that, I can then go to that during the day. But anyways, it was, I was just, I was actually happy to see that people were already booking it up and that there is a lot of that activity up here, but I have to learn my way around and what the snowpack is and how cold it's going to be at that time of year. But I've already took some days off for a memorial. Is it Memorial Day coming up next? I have no idea. May, yes. President yeah, May. Memorial? There you go. Okay. Yeah. So I took uh, I took that Friday off. So I got a four day. So we're going to head out, kind of do a trial run in the cruiser because by then it, was, it should be pretty dialed. I was going to ask, what will you do? Like tent camping? Or are you going to get stuff for your rig? No, See? learning the terms, right? Ground tent for life. I am. I'm a ground no. tenner. What? Uh, dude, roof tent was like game changer for me. I went to North Carolina to visit my buddy Tyler, and he had a rooftop tent. I don't know how many years ago this was. He had one of those cheese wedge ones, um, and it was just like I don't know. It was night and day, and the one that we have. So we've got the roof nest. And it just four latches pops straight up. You're good. That's it. Mm. The only thing you have to worry about is dumping water all over yourself if it's raining. Yeah. 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 So I'll stick with the ground tent. Yeah. <laughs> because of that. Yeah. Of course. No, not, not because of that. I've well, had good luck with my gazelle. Listen, so I'll be. With all due respect, probably 105, 290. 105? Oh. oh my goodness. I'll take that. I, I mean, yeah, I'm going to go with it. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So me, yeah. me, me climbing up that aluminum ladder in the middle of the night or trying to get down so I can go to the bathroom is pretty suspect out in the and middle of nowhere. We did it when it was frosty. So I bet that would be even more. Yeah. I just, pee, at that point, <laughs> I would just pee on the kids. Well, no, listen, you just got to open the side window and yeah, just stick just it out, out and let it fly, dude. Dude, I thought about that with like the shiwis. There you go. Oh man, with the with the oil funnel. That's a rooftop tent, <laughs> top tech tent, right there. That works. So to be fair, <laughs> right, to be just... to bear it all, I was in Bryce with the same kid Taylor or Tyler, um, and we were in Bryce Canyon, and I think it was like 17 degrees out, and we cut, I cut um a smart water bottle for that very purpose, and it was long enough you could do whatever you needed. <laughs> That's funny. Oh right. man. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like you you're gonna have a few dry run trips coming yeah. up. Yeah, yeah. I just drove that thing to Seattle this weekend for the first time, and then so, you know, so you drove it out. Of, you drove it out of its AAA radius. Yeah. Well, no, right under ninety six miles. Oh shit! Hundred mile free tow. Oh, yeah. You got to get that Premier membership, son. Two hundred. No, I have hundred miles. That's what I'm saying. You got to get the Premier. I have the two hundred. The... Okay, there you go. That's how we got home when we grenaded the Jeep out in uh, Mojave. So do you put like a pin in the middle of the map of Washington and go like this within 200 miles and go, <laughs> yeah. that's where we're going, kids. Listen, that what thing's is, got... What is the width of Washington? 450 miles, it, I would it's think. It's wide. So there's only like 50 miles you're missing out. <laughs> it's 
Wow. I'm like, how oh, Mike just came up with that number too. It's about 450 <laughs> miles. It's about 450 miles. Okay. Well, 25 miles on each side. You Listen, know. you'll have to you Google that. See, I'm on, see I'm if on I can internet Joe, lockdown over here. I can pull a Joe Rogan and see what the uh, see what that is. Well, yeah, you guys keep up. talking. I'm going to see what the width of Washington is. Oh, oh I'm already God. on it. I'm already, I'm already oh, on it. We got one of those people. 360 miles. There you go. There you go. Depending on where you're starting. Dude, yeah. if you're dead smack in the middle of the state, you should probably be able to get most of it. Yeah. <laughs> be well, part of the course, co- I've been... Will AAA cover you if you go into Canada? I don't know what you're um... talking about. Are you going to Canada at some point? Boat. Eventually, because I want to run yeah. that one trail. Okay, trails, that's helpful. Trail, uh, listen, that I, keep that, I keep it private. Mm-hmm. The I denim and maple syrup trail? Uh, Oh god, what's it called? I don't know. Dude, BC is beautiful. So it I don't is. know if you're heading to BC, but Squamish is one of my favorite freaking places. I'll keep Squamish that in mind. Has, they have um well I haven't done any off-roading there because it's been a while since I was there, but they have all sorts of climbing and water sports and it's just it yeah, it's right sweet. above me. Mountain biking too, right? Yeah. Probably. Absolutely. Isn't Whistler up that way? Yeah. yeah. Whistler, so Whistler's probably I don't Probably it's an hour and a half from me. Guess 20 miles from Squamish. Wow. Something like that, I guess. You got all sorts of gorgeous stuff up there to do. Hopefully you make the most of it. All I have around here is I drive two and a half hours to sit in trail traffic with every Instagram influencer. On with every forerunner? Yeah, forerunner <laughs> on Gold Mountain. Yeah. You know what? They, 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 put that, they put that gatekeeper in at Gold Mountain. And like you can just drive around it if you want. Like yeah. you don't have to go over it, gatekeeper. So, it's not like, even a gatekeeper. It's just an obstacle course now. Yeah, it's like what the fuck was the point of that? You know, yeah. the whole point is to keep people off the trail who have no business being there. They probably put that there, and then somebody legally was able to make some sort of claim like you can't do this, and so they didn't. Yeah, hmm. probably. So life sucks. Um, sorry. <laughs> You can't get your uh, Subaru out back over Gold Mountain, so you'll have to. Uh, You're gonna have to change let, the whole mountain. Yeah, let us lay some asphalt down for you, so you can see the uh, shale, the tailing pile. Oh, getting so angry, Mike. <laughs> Kaylee, uh, what color? It what it's color? It's getting. It's because it's getting close to his bedtime. No. <laughs> Is your cat? Your cat's getting angry. My cats are locked up downstairs. I don't know the wife is dealing with the cats. So no, like I had to get up. I had to get up. I had to get up at two thirty in the morning because I had to be at Johnson Valley by like five thirty on Friday. So I got up at two thirty, went to the race. We were at BFG Main Pit all day, and then I don't got back to camp. And you know how those shenanigans go when you get back to camp, right? So. We were drinking Old Forester Prohibition. You may have seen the picture on Instagram. And that bottle disappeared. And uh, we had all this wood left over, right? So it's like, well, we're not going to bring it back with, you know, the the guy that brought it. He's like, I'm not going to bring it back. So literally a truck bed full of wood went on the campfire all night. And I actually learned something. And I don't know if you know this tip, but when you get coals from the fire, and you take like half a shovel full of red coals, put them under your camping chair. It warms your ass like a sea heater. I have, I'm just like, this is genius. This is genius. I have not done that. No, like, I mean, obviously, if you're in the forest where there's pine needles all over the ground, terrible idea. But in the <laughs> desert, like half a shovel full of like red hot coals under the seat of your camping chair. It's like literally having a heat, like a sea heater Great. on in a car. Now all nine people that listen to this podcast are going to burn down a mountain. Dude, of we're up, we're up a sea heater advice. <laughs> you guys are going to get served for burning people's asses. Yeah, there we go. They're going to boycott Spotify. Oh, Kaylee, yeah. you as the like, producer guys... were supposed to put all the legal disclosures in the description. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're gonna start. Well, they'll do the coal pile, and then it'll like actually turn into a fire. And like, huh? What's that smell? Oh boy, right. this is it's no just, longer coals. Right? It's yeah, but everybody's ass. been drinking, so all bets are off. We'll just blame it on their liquor con- consumption. So, exactly. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Uh, what what else is what else do you got going on? You have any more questions, Billy? Yeah, I asked Kaylee earlier. What color forerunner is she gonna get? 
Hell cement no. gray, the blue, the green, the ten thousand dollar markup green. No, you know what I would really like to do is I would probably, um, and you you all can give me advice on this, but I would probably. Here's the thing, the the truck market at the moment is not great, right? Like if it's used, it's going to be really really overpriced because people can get that much for them right now. And if it's new, you're probably not going to get one, or they're also going to be like pretty marked up. So I, I haven't Broncos, done. Jesus. Yeah, I'm not like um, I'm kind of waiting it out. I'm trying to see what's going to happen with the economy in the next year or so. See, um, she's smart, guys. It's amazing. <laughs> Beauty, What's brains, up? adventurousness. I love it. She's got, she's got it. it all. Um, so yeah, I'm kind of waiting to see what I get. And I feel like the universe will bring me what I'm supposed to have. So whatever the universe, whatever color the universe wants me to have, bring it on. So, I actually did yeah. that real quick story. I found um, a friend of mine had a friend who was selling her Forerunner. And I was like, see, this is, what do they call it? Is it Kismet? Liz? Yes, Kismet. Um, mm -hmm. it was kismet, I thought, because it was beautiful. It was leather. It had like a little bit of a lift on it already. Um, and it was all blacked out, had this, you know, like the tint and everything. And I was like, this is perfect. It was two wheel drive. I was like, of course. No, I'm not going to do that. Oh, so, thank, God. thank God you knew enough to walk away from that. See, yeah, I know enough. Mm -hmm. I was like, no, no, my girl, guys. It's yeah, it's my dangerous. Girl. Yeah. You know how many <laughs> so, times people people are trying to pedal their two wheel drive fully built trucks on on Craigslist? Yeah. Oh, I see it with the twenty. I see it with the Ram twenty five hundred Cummins trucks. You'll see like a bitch in low mileage truck. It's you know fifty grand and it's only got sixty thousand miles on it. And it's like, oh, it's two wheel drive. That's why. Why would they even first... make that car like that? Like, why would? <laughs> Like, There's why? like four people that buy them. I don't know. <laughs> but um, so being in that end of the industry, you have at least a year before we're out of any sort of like vehicle shortages, parts, chip shortages. What yeah, I will say, when you find, point. listen, when you find what you love, just get it. That's what so I was going to say. Coming from well, Billy. That's what I, well, no, that's what I was going to say. So. The thing yeah. is, I've heard, is, I've heard not it, to trust Billy. So. Don't <laughs> really? trust Billy. Well, don't trust Billy when it comes to car stuff. Necessarily. Car stuff, financial stuff, you know. <laughs> wow. <laughs> well, I, anyway, I turn this my therapy start after this. <laughs> uh, the therapy started at your bottle of a tattoo, tattoosh, whatever you got over there. So that's your therapy. Anyway, we're talking about. Pour another uh, glass. Vehicle, is what you're saying. Poor, poor vehicle choices. Pour another glass. There you go. So, Kaylee, here's the thing. Yes. If you wait, there's probably going to be some sort of a recession. If you buy used, vehicle prices may dip. But the problem is we're in for at least another year of supply chain problems on new cars. Mm -hmm. Toyotas historically retain their resale value. So it's always been... The new versus used, it's hard to find a low mileage used forerunner that's not that's in good shape. So usually when they do show up, it's you know five, six years old, hundred thousand miles. If you want something new, buy something new. Inflation has run rampant. Um, gas, food prices, everything's gotten more expensive. Mm -hmm. So kind of the argument's been made that maybe these used car values that we're seeing are going to be here to stay. So. If you find something like Billy says that you like and it fits and you're not picky on color, you're willing to travel, you and Liz can take a road trip, go camping, go pick up your forerunner, um, mm -hmm. do something like that. I, I, and you're in a position to do it and the right thing comes along, I would probably jump on it. Yeah. Cause I don't think it's solid advice. Ever you, you if, stay, if you, if you stay out you of the lake for areas, year, you'll get better deals. Yeah, like if you're literally willing to go, if you want a cement gray TRD Pro and, you know, you go to El Monte Toyota, you have to compete against the 10 Instagram influencers that want the same truck. If you're willing to drive to like South Dakota and they have one on their lot that nobody wants because they're all driving Chevy and Ram trucks, you can probably walk in there and get it at a halfway decent price. And take an epic road trip back. That's the kind of the advice that I would give you or anybody else. Kind we'll of take in an this epic market. road trip up there. 
and then yeah. continue back with two rigs. Love there that. you go. I like it. All right, Liz. So you have a passenger for a while, um, but we'll yes. be on the lookout, and then we'll take a we'll take an epic road trip to get me a car. Yay. But like I said, so with our trip, so there was one day we talked constantly the whole day, and then there was a day that we had hours of silence, and I was happy with all of it. So you're gonna be my forever passenger. I'm I'm so down with you as my co-captain. I love it. Yay! I can't wait until I start driving though. And then you're going to have to teach me how to, like, drive. drive. Yeah. <laughs> She's going to be real stressed out. <laughs> so I put I put a list of questions together um, for both of you. Awesome. And, Are we going to do rapid um, fire? It's going to be rapid fire. See, you already know the name of the game. Um, so I guess, Liz, you're going to go first. You ready? Please. No. No? <laughs> yes, go. Coke or Pepsi? Neither. Okay, neither. Fine. Yeah. Uh, when it comes to shocks, Fox or King? Kings. Ooh, ouch. Uh, we already touched on this one. Rooftop tent or ground tent? Rooftop. Cat or dog? Mm, both. I have dog. Both? Okay. You're allergic to cats. Yeah, shut up. <laughs> it's an animal. I love it. <laughs> Mountains or desert? Mountains. Mountains? Yeah. Uh, podcast or music on the road? Music. Well, no, I've become a podcast lover, so it depends, but yes. All nice. of it. Or silence. <laughs> All of it? Okay. Personally, I love podcasts. Goodness gracious. It makes, it makes yeah. the time go by so much quicker, uh, mm -hmm. especially if you listen to this one. Um, <laughs> Kaylee, same questions. Coke or Pepsi? Coke. Coke. Fox or King? No or do idea. you not know? No <laughs> idea. The correct answer is Fox. No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> King gives out hats and sweatshirts. Fox wins races. Next question. Like rooftop sweatshirts. tent or ground okay. tent? <laughs> <laughs> rooftop um, tent or ground tent? Rooftop, okay. for Perfect. sure. Uh, cat or dog? Dogs. But I have a cat. Dog. Also. Wah, 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 wah. Mountains or desert? Mountains. Mountains. Correct. Correct. Uh, it's That's such a hard one, isn't it, though? Because they both have their own unique kind of beautiful thing about it. i love desert mornings and desert sunsets but mountains i love the pine trees and the, the sound of the wind and everything so else baking pine needles is one of my favorite smells really mm -hmm. my wife baked pine cones and i thought she was going to burn the house down because oh, she God, the oven at 200 so. degrees. well that that's the thing so she read this um, whole so we went we went camping up in the mountains and she she's like i want pine cones to put in the house and i'm like honey you want pine cones get all the pine cones you want so she got like three of these giant pine cones and read what to do with the pine cones. And I told her before we left camp, thing. <laughs> well, I told her before we left camp, I go put them in a plastic bag. So she put them in one of the trash bags, tied it up, got home. You were supposed to bathe it in vinegar and water for soak them for a couple hours. Soon as she did that, all the spiders started coming out of the pine cones, which yep. was great yeah. why I had her put it in the plastic bag. Mm -hmm. after that you have to bake it for an hour at like 200 degrees and i'm just like Blowing. sitting there thinking to myself pine cones are flammable i don't think you should put them in the stove well online says to do it and i'm like put them in the oven i'll watch the smoke detector and you know so she put them in the oven then you have to trim all the little pokey things off of them yep but i have beautiful pine pokey cones. things yeah so, so some pines they have to actually hit a certain temperature the fires basically for them to reproduce they, so, open, they open up right and all the seeds come out yeah well i mean okay. sometimes they can explode like they you know these they have ones to spread were out already, they were already opened up okay which was and 200 crazy. is not 200 not that bad yeah but all the sap like started running off of them but my house literally smelled like christmas trees it was great so yeah, that's awesome so glad this uh, had a win. happy ending. Yeah, it had a, had a happy <laughs> ending. No fires. Everybody's happy. Uh, Could have been so real bad. Hayley, podcast or music on a road trip? What do you listen to? I like both. I like to break it up. I am. I love to. This is not rapid fire anymore. I apologize. Um, I love to just like belt out songs in the car because you get the best acoustics there. And sometimes I think I can actually <laughs> sing in the car. Second only um, to the shower. Second only to the shower. 
Uh, but I love, I love how podcasts have come and like learning things that I wouldn't normally learn, like mm -hmm. just go ahead and buy the car or, <laughs> or like don't the four, say the, the four big, yeah, or the, the four podcast. big college words that Billy learned tonight. Exactly. <laughs> you always learn something. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah. yeah, I do like both. I, I think the podcast versus music for me, it's. 50 50 like if i'm sitting in traffic podcast kill time but if i'm like on the open highway like if i'm ripping up the coast it's like you know the ventures surf rock something like that through the desert it's like zz top uh old school like outlaw country like i feel like sometimes the terrain like kind of dictates the music right? i think it's funny comes. that when he hits a certain terrain he's like oh i better put on my outlaw country <laughs> i mean yes agree well, yeah we're in the it's desert. Dope. You don't listen to that while you're driving through the slums of like overpass overland, like in I Portland. Do. Yes, you absolutely should. Yeah, I'll go after that. 45 and start plugging homeless yeah. people. Leave California once in a while, Mike. It's a great country. <laughs> so I will add, um, since you said podcast and music, um, today I had two different stints of two hour traffic, and I will listen to audiobooks. Sometimes audiobooks are really nice because it's like, oh, I'm just going to listen to this instead of looking at that dumb jerk over there. <laughs> like, what do you, do? So what do you use for audiobooks? Uh, so for now, um, until we cancel our subscription, um, um, what is it, Audible? Is it Audible? Uh, yeah. A friend of mine just suggested the Murderbot series. I'm really into fiction. Um, okay. and like this one, science fiction and they're like novellas. So they're like shorter. Um, but, uh, that right now I'm using audible. So there, there's a podcast that I would listen to while I was stuck in traffic when I, when I worked for a BMW corporate and it was murder in a small town. Oh, cool. That sounds So funny. check that one out. It's pretty interesting. It's like a comical tongue in cheek. They cover like weird murders this and that it's it's pretty interesting that's cool. nice i'll yeah. uh, i'll plug um that your local library has done a very good job of making digital uh rentals i guess pretty easy like if you have a library card you can download your um live like a library app and then uh they have a lot of audiobooks um, really? in the library and then everything's okay. free so so, I so love you go to your local library branch get a library card and then you can use so you can actually download. do it all online so like there's a app called a uh, cloud library and then you okay. input your library card number so a library card number you can get online wherever your local library is so. so are you restricted to like your local library or can I check out books from like an like that they have audio books at like, I don't know, New York's like Giant Central Library or something like that that may have a bigger selection? So I'm not a library expert and I don't know exactly how it works, <laughs> but I'm pretty sure that you have to type in your address when you get a library not card. Yet. So as long as you know someone's address in New York, I'm sure. Oh, gosh. Gotcha. So it'll link you to whatever your local, local. library branch Yeah, open is. a Yellow Pages, Mike. It's basically, the place where you I pay taxes. I haven't a library since like 1989. And but you it... probably before that. I have kids. I've been in the library. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So that that's a good way to do it though, because then you you know you, you you use your taxes that you already pay for this library. That's anyway. a good idea. Interesting. Oh, Cloud library. library. Cloud library. All right. Yes. Good deal. And uh, so I've been reading. I've never read like the Harry Potter series. Um, I know yeah. it's crazy, but um, a bunch <laughs> of my friends are very like i wasn't i just wasn't into it when i was younger and so um the when co you know 2020 when covid hit i started reading them um but i moved away from my friend that has all of the books so i <laughs> that's why i got a library card was so i could read those books and just to say that the audiobooks of harry potter are amazing so if oh, you cool. haven't mm -hmm. i feel like i'm like way like telling people something that like no, everyone so knows Funny thing, like my wife and I just started rewatching all the Harry Potter, Potter movies like three days ago. Legit, and just watched them. Yeah. So I, I read a book. 
watched the movie, read the book, watched the movie. That's how I'm have getting. Have you seen all the movies? Stuff. No, I have, and I haven't read all the books yet. I think I'm only uh, at. It's amazing. I'm starting four. So I just finished. I just finished. Believe it or not, I just finished Star Wars. I just finished The Mandalorian, mm-hmm. and now I'm on to Boba Fett. Boba Fett. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm up to date on that one. Well, I, I I felt like everyone's like, oh, you haven't seen The Mandalorian, and I'm like. No, I haven't seen The Mandalorian. And it's like, okay, so maybe I should watch that. And I'd never seen so the first the first chronological Star Wars were four, five, six, right? Well, I'd seen one and two, but I'm like, oh, these suck. It's like 2000, 2001. I'm like, I'm not watching any more of these. So I actually had to go back and watch like episode three. And then watch all of the subsequent Star Wars after that. Then the Mandalorian. Like that was Christmas time. Like we were down. We were watching movies. And, you know, sometimes it's great to just sit on the couch, bowl of popcorn, thing of red vines, and just kind of power through some movies as much as we like our outdoor time. Right? Yeah. Love it. You could just download Sorry. those and bring them with you, Mike. You could do both at the same time. I guess I could, right? Take your guys' tip. Put the uh, iPad and the... Uh, gazelle ground tent and uh watch uh i don't have that anymore there. you don't have it yeah oh, no i sold it before. what are yeah, you I gonna need... do uh i think i'm gonna grab one of the overlandish tents dude so liz you can sit on one shoulder and go you need a rooftop tent and i can sit on the other shoulder and go no you need a ground tent and we can see which which one of us wins yes. Listen, the, cru- the cruiser's too tall for a rooftop tent it Why? doesn't need any more top heaviness trust me if they don't weigh that much. It's not. Uh, listen, the cruiser. You, you, you got you enough in the middle of it down. and put the twins on either side. No, he's yeah. worried about yeah. when you're driving. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. all right. I didn't think about that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, FJ sixties do get rusty roof rails, so maybe it's not something you want to do. Okay. I have backpacked. I do have a ground tent, but I mean, when you're thinking like. Uh, I just love speed and I love easy and I love practical. So, I mean, four latches up and then just tuck it in, lock, latch it, tuck it in, latch it, ready to go. What? That's and why I love that one. You have a roof nest, right? Correct. And that's mm-hmm. eye camper. Is that no, how that roof is? Nest. It it's roof nest. <laughs> I don't know. It's Listen, like, I, it's I'm, like a, their eagle. I'm a poverty person. I sleep on the ground. Yeah. But I, I obviously I not, Mister. I was in a slide out at Hammers. It wasn't mine, and That's it was fair. 15 fucking degrees. So guess what? I'm going to sleep in a toy hauler. Yeah. I don't care. Even if the slide out was too small, and I had to sleep in the fetal position. So, oh. Well, that's it's why like... we we were able to get from place to place so quickly. I think yeah. one morning, it only took us like 25, 30 minutes to get everything packed away and on the road again. And when you have a ground tent or anything like that, it's going to take much longer. Especially if it's raining. Are you kidding me? Folding all that crap up and then you have all this water tucked into everything. So well, Liz got that was a fear. Anyway, but yes, but yeah, that was yeah. one time and it was <laughs> dumb. But the tent itself stayed dry um, mm-hmm. because it was waterproof, which was great. And that's hard shell roof, right? Correct. So it's hard shell. It's not one of the V ones. It actually lifts this way, which I love. So you can sit anywhere in it and you're still, you can sit totally upright. It has a full size mattress in it. And then we also put um, a, there was, ah, I just got it. It's a double. So it's a full size inflatable thing on it too. So we use that to like adjust. I will tell you being that I do have a full size Ram. Where did Billy go? (laughs) I think his internet's a little, but we can probably still hear you. Yeah. Billy. He's decided he's done. He'll reach us. He got sick of us bagging on his Land Cruiser. He was like, "These people are talking too much." I'm so, done. I I do like the idea of the Go Fast Camper. Um, okay. The problem is, is my wife. She wants to be comfortable, so I got the Gazelle. You can stand up to change in it. She has a cot. Like mm-hmm. me, if I just go out by myself, it's a backpacking tent and Fair a enough. bedroll and sleeping bag. Coleman stove done. Done, done, right. done. Don't need anything else. Um, but she, I have to have her comfortable. And as I get older, it's like, well, I want to be comfortable too. Mm-hmm. So the cot's comfortable. Um, the gazelle's great. I can stand up and change in it. But like 
as I see the GFC campers come into the shop, it's like, oh, well, you can stand up in it if you have a truck like you do and mm-hmm. I do. Um, they put up easy. They come down easy. Uh, but for me, it's like when I go camping, I'm usually in the same spot two, three days. Uh, Got it. So it's like, and I ran into this when I went to KC summer camp, I think, and it was 2019 that I had my Jeep and I had my ground tent and everyone's like, Oh, let's go on a trail run. Let's go on a trail run. And like, I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll just get in my Jeep and I'm ready to go. And like 45 yes. minutes later, there's still guys trying to put their awnings away and pack their tents up and this and that. And I'm like, I could have been at the trailhead by now. And right. it's kind of the downside, but I guess where it seems like you guys are always in a different place every night, it makes a hundred percent sense because you have to pack up anyway. Right. So that's something that we had discussed too, uh, depending on what trip you're taking. If you want to stay, sometimes I'll even have, um, gosh, we have this little tent that you throw and it like opens up. So we'll put that someplace, put a bunch of crap in it that we don't actually care if it's stolen. And that claims our spot if we want to leave and come back. Because imagine you have to pack up your tent and then you leave to do a trail or just to get food or who knows what right. it is. You come back and it's like, okay, this mother stole our spot, you know? Right. So, but other than that, if you, so with our trip, I mean, we went to Washington and back in a day, in a week. So it was boom, 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 every place, boom, like boom, you boom. said. So if you're, if you're on the move, it's excellent. If you're not, it's nice to have like a, a base camp. So sure. do you do, do you do like a night, a night or two in the wilderness and then do you do like a night in the hotel not typically not typically there yeah, I've, had... I've been giving that i've been given that edict by the wife um uh-huh. like a night or two in the tent is one night in the hotel so <laughs> oh good luck um i've been in that situation where i'm working i'm on the road with somebody who has work so we'll stop gotcha. and use free wi-fi and whatever it is and um but or you know what? You've had a rough ass trip so far or a rough week or someone steals your tripod. <coughs> Crazy. Um, so at that point, yeah, you want to stay in a hotel for a night. I totally am behind that. But uh, especially when it's me and Kaylee on the road, like nothing. Like if if there was camping near Billy and he was willing to meet us, we probably would have done that. So you know, gotcha. I, well, and she gave me that option too, right? She was like, "We can totally like on the way back if you want to stay in the hotel." I was like, "Why?" <laughs> <laughs> if we want to go on an hotel trip, yeah, yes. it's like if, if we want to do a, a relaxing hotel trip, then let's plan that. But mm-hmm. um, yeah, I was game for just gotcha. being on the road. She yeah, when I, we took that three week trip, we did a couple nights in a hotel, and they were worse than camping. Oh, Meaning, yeah. like, when oh, you want to just it's so expensive, it's it like just, 80 bucks so for trash. a cardboard yeah. bed over there and like paper sheets. Who knows who's been in it? Yeah, so yeah. I probably have one of the and let's see if you guys can top this. I have one of the worst hotel stories you, you can ever imagine. Mm-hmm. And I was driving back east with a buddy of mine and it, we took the southern route, right? We took the eight and we went through Deming, New Mexico. Oh. And the snow on the 10 had forced everyone to take the southern route. And mm-hmm. we didn't plan in advance. We just figured we would t- we would just pick up hotels along the way driving back east. And he had a car packed full of crap because he was moving back east. So we couldn't recline the seats back. So we had to stop at a hotel. We drove basically from San Diego and our first stop was in, in Deming, New Mexico. And the reason it was in Deming, New Mexico, because the two towns prior to that, that we'd stopped, all the hotels were full. So we found a hotel probably built in the 1940s. that was $60 a night. The door lock didn't work. It had bars on the windows, no water in the swimming pool. And we had to wedge a chair under the door handle to keep the door from opening. And he slept on the floor. I slept on top of the sheets in the bed in 20 degree weather in my jeans and a jacket because it was so dirty. And I mean, but it goes back to that thing. Like it requires planning in advance. And Mm -hmm. like you said, Billy, it's like, unless you plan, like you planned your whole route in advance and guess what? 
fire season came and your plans went right out the window. So as much as I like just that, you know, free spirit, get on the road, go make, you know, just take what comes, comes along, plan, don't plan your stops, just go where you want. That type of problem that you may run into is kind of difficult because we tried two towns and a bunch of hotels and it was like two 30 in the morning before we found this hotel. And it, it was like the one room available. Amen to that. Yeah. Yeah. Puts a lot of pressure, unnecessary pressure when you're just trying yeah. to last minute find places along the whole way. But at the same time, to that point, you're trying to find hotels on your way. So if you are deciding, oh, I'm going to stay in a national forest, at least you have all of this space that you can at least kind of try to like explore and find something. For sure. Versus if you're trying to stay in an establishment, I mean, God, I've stayed in Roswell, New Mexico. Those were some bad hotels too. Is that where all the street lights have the alien heads on them? Because we we drove through Roswell at night. Yeah. <laughs> awful. Oh my god. I was with a gal, a girlfriend of mine, and some guys were like, Oh, let's, you know, I anyway, they made us so uncomfortable. We're like, I don't even know if I can sleep here right now. We get locked the door and just felt so uncomfortable. We left immediately as early as possible. But Roswell's not an ideal place, guys. <laughs> Keep that check that off your list. I drove through yeah. Roswell on our way to uh, Amarillo, Texas. So okay, yeah. yeah, we were on our way to Texas. Yeah, uh huh. Austin though. Did you stop at Cadillac Ranch? Did you do the uh, that and no? Uh -uh. You ever been to Cadillac been Ranch? Uh uh, haven't heard of it. That's where they have all the Cadillacs buried in the ground. Oh, or, okay, yeah. yes. Oh, yeah. I've seen that. No, I haven't been. Mm -mm. Well, it was one of those things. It's like, when am I ever going to be outside of Amarillo ever again? So might as well stop and then have that um, at that that restaurant, the Big Texan, where they have the 72 ounce steak and you have to eat like all the sides and you get it for free. Uh, 72 yeah. ounce steak. Yeah, it's the, the Big Texan. I don't so know. Road, I trips, are, road trips are great. <laughs> no, I, I didn't order it. I, I didn't order it. I'm like, no way. Mm -hmm. There's no way. Like, no. I like to enjoy my food. Oh, Kaylee. Uh, we're going to put the spotlight on you real quick. What was your favorite meal of our trip? Ooh. She's like, I don't remember. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, I, I know which am one I, was. Am I, supposed to, <laughs> am I supposed to have an answer? Like restaurant or was it was it a cooked meal? So we went to a restaurant with Billy, but yeah, was... everything else I basically cooked for us. It was awesome. Yeah. Oh, wait. We went to... um. We went to that Mexican Ooh. restaurant. Yeah. Oh, we went to like so a random hole in the wall in uh, Eureka. I was really Which is late. funny, Liz, because recently I was talking to somebody about that. I was like, yeah, we stopped here. And they're like, oh, yeah, like Eureka's not a great place to just like stop. I was like, oh, well, we it did. Was fine. <laughs> it was totally fine. Yep. No, we went out um, with Billy to the lighthouse. Is that what it's called, Billy? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, in Bellingham. And that was delicious. I had a, a filet mignon that was amazing. And Liz really and good I too. shared a creme brulee, which is amazing and Doing your guys's uh, ambiance music was off the hook the kids music. were fun the kids had a good time the music, <laughs> Dude, the music was fire oh my god no that was fun but actually liz i really liked the nachos that you, I knew you were gonna say that the bison nachos they were Hell super yeah. delicious yeah. yeah made those on the scottle and big sir and homemade uh tomatillo salsa it was so. amazing. Yeah. Ooh, I love Tomatillo. Mm -hmm. Really good. It's my favorite yeah. kind of salsa. Yeah. Wow. Um, I get that. Like, I make chili verde in the crock pot. That's, like, one Ooh. of my favorite things. Cool. So do you do you ever make anything like that? Do you ever do anything I, in the crock pot? I cook constantly. I don't do the crock pot as much as I do a Dutch oven. Um, okay. I just got a concept. Dutch oven. Oh, yes. I will send you something. It's a French oh, recipe, and it's amazeballs. Yeah, send, send me a recipe. I'd love to try it. Okay. I just got a really nice uh, cast iron Dutch oven. Nice. Um, but like on the slow cooker, like I do chili and I'll do like uh, pot roast, stuff like that. But mm -hmm. with the chili verde, I'll get like pork shoulder, right? And I'll um, like braise it with garlic and onions, mm -hmm. uh, throw all of that into the crock pot uh, with some jalapeno tomatillo a little bit of tomato and a bay leaf and i'll just let that thing sit in my house 
eight hours. Amazing. On low. And the whole house smells like chili verde. And then I pour it in bowls um, with like Mexican cheese on top and then tortillas. So so Billy's going to come down. We're all going to come over to your place for that. And I'll Done. bring the Lagavulin. Um, so I'll make the, all. Uh, I'm so stoked for that. Uh, the recipe I'll send you is uh, pork yeah. ole. And it's basically pork shoulder, pork butt. Um, braised in wine and milk and Ooh. chilies and citrus and it's oh, oh and that sounds fire. amazing it's incredible uh, that does sound good Haley just I come mean, over I'm, I'll cook for you all the time anytime okay. baby <laughs> you can go to Liz's boat <laughs> <laughs> my boat this is like you it know, looks like the of set of Magnum PI it looks like that little yes. apartment Magnum PI I stayed in so dude I yeah. dig it I love it <laughs> Or That's Archer, cool. like modern day Archer. Oh yeah. Where where's uh where's your Glen Gooley uh scotch? Or uh, what do you call it? It's over there. What does Archer call a scotch? It's uh, the Glen Gooley. Yeah. And then um Egg when... Woodhouse. Woodhouse. Oh, Woodhouse. <laughs> <laughs> oh. And then when they have um oh god, what is his favorite? What's his? I'm blanking so hard right now. His favorite guy who dates his mom. Oh, the Reynolds. Cadillac. Burt Reynolds. Burt Reynolds. Guy. Burt Reynolds. Burt Reynolds. Oh, Burt Reynolds. Yeah. Yeah, Burt Reynolds. Freaking Burt Reynolds. <laughs> and he asks yeah. for um, a Pim's cup and a pimp cup. <laughs> Gotta have one of those. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, you know I'm a bad parent when much. the kids are like, "We love watching Archer." <laughs> Well, well, your kids are going to grow up like perfectly adjusted, though. Yeah, well rounded. Well rounded, perfect. They're a lot of good kids. I will say, I don't, well, I don't want to say that on camera, but I do like your kids. Yeah, you do. We all got it. We all got it. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 So, they're a good team. <laughs> yeah, so, um, I don't Did know. You... I don't have much else. Do you have anything else to talk about? Or are we just going to sit here and banter about food, which I'm also fine with? Dude, I cook constantly. So if you ever have questions about that, Pinterest is Thanks. your friend. <laughs> I have a lot of recipes off of Pinterest. Yeah. Is that where you get it? Sometimes, yeah. I have a ton of cookbooks. My grandmother gave me a cookbook from the freaking White House. Like ancient, ancient, well, ancient, Oh, really? Yeah, recipes. I haven't tried a lot of them. They're a little odd. Um, but... You know, I'm I'm into experimenting. Um, there's also I have an Italian cookbook that says like it's okay. involving octopus and it says beat it on a marble countertop. So you know I haven't done that yet, but it's on my <laughs> list of to do. You know what I've nice. started cook. You know what I actually got into that we did. Uh, we did a friend's giving at my house, and oh, nice. I've never done this before, but making pizza and yes. cooking it on the Traeger. I got a pizza stone. I put on the Traeger, like I go to an Italian deli and mm. I buy like the dough, I buy the sauce and the, and the mozzarella and then pepperoni, mushrooms and make a pizza. And, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm like all these years that I ordered pizza, it's like in the time it takes for you to order a pizza and have it delivered, you can make like a legit awesome pizza. Yeah. One that won't screw up your intestines so badly. <laughs> wow. I'm not for fast food. Like, I love to cook. I, like, I don't know. Kaylee and I will get in and out. And then she got me to have McDonald's one time. Oh, oh. God. I can't believe I'm admitting that. Um, <laughs> no, I don't like fast food. Like, even, like, delivery pizza. I don't, I don't either. Mm -mm. But I, you know what? On the way back from uh, King of Hammers on Saturday, like... I was in a rush to get home. The morning obviously didn't go as planned. So in, I think it, it was 29 Palms, I literally stopped at the McDonald's, picked up two sausage McMuffins, a large coffee, two hash browns, and it was disgusting, but it was the best thing I'd eaten. And it was so good. I don't know what it is. It's just, it's tasty. It's It's terrible food. Let's be honest. Nobody should be eating that stuff. Mm -hmm. McDonald's um, breakfast I, is where it's at. Yeah, egg McMuffin. Yeah. You gotta you gotta step it up and pay the and extra it's buck. Like egg. It's powdered egg. Why would you eat that? I don't want to like eat them. normal eggs. I don't like eggs either. Well, I, I like egg yolks. I don't like egg whites. I'm a weirdo yeah. about I know. Mike gets breakfast burritos with no egg. Yeah, I don't I'm gonna make them this weekend. I'm gonna make them with sausage, potatoes, cheese, everything, salsa. 
Go I'm with it. you. That's exactly yeah. what I want. Hell yeah. Yeah. See, there you go. Cheers to that too. All right. I'm just going <laughs> to throw you two over here. Cheers. <laughs> right? <laughs> we're, we're the non egg eating section over here. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. Something wrong with you egg two. Free. Yeah. But I feel bad. Like, Weirdo. you eat the fast <laughs> yeah. food and you just feel disgusting. Yes. Right. So. Honestly, the people I know who eat the worst, they're the angriest mother truckers. Like, they're just rude. You'll be happier if you eat better and exercise and be out there. I got to get the exercise thing on. And, you know, forever today, my morning was I get up, take a shower, leave the house, go to the coffee shop, like large iced coffee full of like sugar, vanilla syrup, mm -hmm. full of cream some sort of a pastry and any more like it's I get up and it's turkey sausage, Greek yogurt and some Cheerios and I'm on black coffee. So no, yeah, cream. because your wife cares yeah, about you friend. makes you Yeah, my wife cares Aww. about me and she, she makes all of it. And I pack my lunch and today it was like Turkey sandwich, um, an apple, a cutie, um, you know, it, I got the eating part down. Um, like we went, to, well, no, like the good eating, part, right? Not the bad eating part. Like I still, I got the eating down. She takes got... care of the cooking. I take care of the eating. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. But like, I mean, forever in a day, like I weighed two hundred and twenty-five pounds, and you know this, Billy. Like. You can go to the bar all night. You can get, you can eat carne asada burritos every day. You can eat whatever the, whatever the fuck you want. And you weigh 225 pounds, then 225 becomes 250, then 250 becomes 275. And you would stop for a while, lose 15 pounds, no problem. But now, why are you like, throwing me into there? <laughs> oh, you know this, Billy. You can get no, fat real quick. No, you and I are like, it's at the point where fat? it's like, you eat Thanks. right. Fuck off! Like, like, <laughs> but it's like, all about this. You're just a pig. Hey, you know all about right? this. No. <laughs> so, to be fair, I used to be able to bench my own weight, and I could no longer do that. I was 140. I could bench 140. I used to like. It's just my point is our bodies change so quickly, and like if you don't a stay in some sort can't of carry a 12 ounce coconut. <laughs> What's your favorite color? <laughs> huh? Red, blue, blue. blue no blue so i mean the thing is is like i got the tr i got the eating healthier portion of it down uh -huh. the that thing that's tradition. killing me is is the exercise regimen right mm -hmm. so it's like i've got part of the equation working for me uh like this week it's all um i got chicken breast to make to make chicken breast and salad uh, salmon with carrots and potatoes in the Dutch oven. The carrots and potatoes are going in the Dutch oven. Nice. Um, you know, chicken tacos. I don't do ground beef tacos anymore. It's all like turkey or grilled chicken. So I got that portion of it down. It's just the missing components exercise. And that's the thing I really struggle with. Right. Yeah. Honestly, there's some well, on in schools of thought yeah. too. Yeah, right. In all fairness, yeah. you you do go ride your bike to get a margarita, so that is exercise, exercise right there. My, my Debo Beach Cruiser. So yeah. yeah, I ride it to go get what Mexican punk? food and a margarita, or I go ride it to go get chili dog and a beer. So yeah, that that's working out really well. So <laughs> I think I need a different form of exercise. So I've actually ha been going to like physical therapy because of my sh my issues with my shoulder oh, all the yeah. years wrenching. So like I w it was suggested to me to do yoga. I don't know if I could do that. Terrible visual. I don't think anybody wants to see me do yoga. You should do yoga. Hell yeah. But you know I got to do something, and it's like it goes back to that thing. All of us need our physical health. Um, it's just. I don't know. Maybe I haven't hit rock bottom yet to where I actually have to do something, but I'm trying to stave off that. Try not to get there first. Well, yeah. Like I'm 43, you know, it's like, I don't want to get that. Like I'm fine. I go to the doctor. I'm fine. I go to the doctor. I'm fine. I go to the doctor. I go to the doctor and they're like, fuck dude. Like 
your liver ele- your liver levels are horrible, your cholesterol is horrible, and it's like all of a sudden in the span of 12 months, it's like the wheels fell off the car. <laughs> So, but it wasn't in the span of 12 months. Well, no. And that's the thing. Like I, I know, I know a number, well, no, I know a number of people that have done that and have gone to the doctor and yeah. everything, everything's fine. Everything's fine. And then all of a sudden it's like, everything falls apart. Yeah. So, I mean, for sure. You know, that's also a, like, doctor, I have a pretty healthy family. Like, you know, my dad also doesn't listen to the podcast. He's, 72 on wife number six has four kids smoked and drinks since he's probably 16 and he's pretty healthy so i have genes on my side i guess but I, you know i i don't want to suffer like long-term health problems so i'm trying to get ahead of the ball billy i know you've been working pretty hard to get kind of ahead of things too so it just yeah. sucks getting old right yeah. You got to find what diet works for you because some people, so some people are great with vegan. Some people are great with only meat. Some people are great with like, you know, just, I don't know, uh, omnivores basically. So unfortunately there's so many, oh, this is your, this is your diet. This is your fix. But it really depends on what your body is and how you respond to things. So you got to start with that and you also have to be moving. Honestly, if you're bored of working out, go climb, go find something that seems more, I don't know, like sporty that you're not thinking about you're accidentally working out yeah just calories yeah. in versus calories out man it's yeah like you you used to do because i remember we've been friends long enough like you used to do baseball and softball and like i used to do martial arts and stuff and it's mm-hmm. like you just get older and life gets busy and that stuff just falls by the wayside if you don't keep a discipline on it mm-hmm. and all of a sudden here you are and here we are. But that stuff's also good for your mental health too. So it's like, take that into consideration on top of it is like, you know, having something outside of just work or, yes. you know, your podcast or, you know, something physical. You have a gym podcast, like, all right, we're yeah. going to work out together. <laughs> <laughs> dumbbells to whiskey. whiskey. So I'll sit there and drink. Nice. In the you can put your cats yes. and headbands and little dumbbells for them. Perfect. Right. They can work with you. Yo- yo- <laughs> I'll call it yoga with pussy. So we'll do the cats wow. and have yoga. <laughs> wow. He's no, not even drinking. I know. It's- <laughs> well, because it's, da- it's daylight where he lives. I no, it like, looks like daylight. It's so funny. No, it does look like daylight, but it's actually not. Yeah. So no, like yoga. Yoga has been suggested to me, and I think there is a big value in stretching and staying mm-hmm. limber. Um, There's a big like, thing. That my my friend used to say, you don't have to be flexible to do yoga. You do yoga to be flexible. So if you don't feel flexible, yoga is for you. Just make sure correct. you're not hurting yourself doing it. But yes, it can be very beneficial. Correct. And that was the thing. It's like, you know, when I took, when I took martial arts, it's like... A, flexibility was a lot of the was a big component of it and the guy that taught me also did tai chi classes and it was a great progression into being flexible from not being flexible like you said because i i wasn't flexible i'm not now and i think that's the big worry is that i take that step and it's like i'm not flexible and all of a sudden i'm hurt (laughs) and i you know and the body degrades over time. It's just like, you know, Billy used to hit the gym and do all that type of stuff. And like you and I have talked and, you know, it's just, it's one of those things that like, if you don't stay on top of it, like y- you don't notice the slow degradation, I think. No, it, it's, so what is that? Um, one of the ways that you can cook frogs is by putting them in cool water and slowly turning up the heat. And then they boil to death without realizing it. That's basically what we're doing to ourselves. Pretty much. Man, this is getting dark quick. No, we're <laughs> well, not. Here, it's let's like, do a like happy every, plug. Anybody that's, <laughs> yeah. What's going that, on here? Anybody Bailey, help me. listening to this podcast that's over 35 is experiencing the like, exact same things that we're talking about. Or they're, co- or they're coming up on it. I feel like we hit a nerve with Mike. No. We lost control, Billy. We, yeah, we've, it's turkey burgers. We lost control. Like, <laughs> 
So speaking, so. because we're talking about health and we're talking about taking care of ourselves, um, I have to have one more plug, probably. Plug so um, Dr. Matt Rice, he posts a bunch of stuff for either exercises or stretches or all sorts of stuff on his Instagram. Um, Is that your alter, I mean, alter ego, Mike? <laughs> Matt Rice? Is that like some sort of like third, second cousin I don't know about? Yeah, you, you know Mike's last name is Rice, right? No, I had like, no idea. Yeah, yeah, no, it's like fried. Yeah, like fried rice. So or like distantly go. related. I love it. No, I know most of the Rices. That one doesn't ring a bell. Well, he's my cousin, but he's he also incredible. Oh, oh, he, wait a minute. Yes. So, and he's a doctor, so you know he's not related to you, Mike. <laughs> Fuck no, he's not. <laughs> Oh but, man. But he like so I don't know, he helps people out and you know, all ages helps you stay fit and stuff. I've always been worried about I want to get in good habits now for when I am older because if I don't start now, I'm never going to start, you know. So I yeah. used to climb, I used to pole vault, I used to do all sorts of awesome stuff and um I mean, there's a lot that I don't do anymore and so he's given me some stuff like to work out things that I never would have thought about working out. Because everyone's like, oh, just curl and bench and whatever. But you have to worry about all – you have so many muscles that you always forget about. So yeah. he does, like, posts and videos, and it's amazing. Anyway. Like, the crazy thing is, is I used to work in the shop all the time, right? So I, I was working on cars day in and day out. And yeah. you don't see old guys in the shop, right? It because they're all There's broken. An old, right, they're all broken, right, Billy? Like the old tech retirement plan is going to the used car team where you do windshields and bushings and services all day. And it's like, I was like, well, this takes its toll on, on you. So I should do what I can to get out of the shop and sit behind a desk. But now that I've done that, it's like that also had an effect of not of me not using like muscles and moving in a certain way that I had for 15 years. So it, right. it's also had an effect on me personally sitting behind the desk. So, you know, you don't, you don't use the muscles, you lose them. So yeah. um, it's, you know, if one you to use on. the climb, huh? So that's one to grow on. If you yeah. got to use it, you're going to lose it. Gotta, yeah, you got to use it. You got to use it or you're going to lose it. Like you used to climb, you used to do all this stuff. But if like, if you just stop, you know, it's the same thing. Like I quit doing martial arts and flexibility gone, um, you know, stuff like that. So, you know, I definitely think there's a benefit to it. And, you know, this isn't necessarily the focus of this podcast, but, you know. We covered a lot uh, in this podcast today. Yeah. We covered a lot in podcast. Cooking, martial arts. I feel arts. like we helped you out a lot, Mike. Seemed like you had some stuff you wanted to get off your chest. Yeah. <laughs> we, we were here for you. Yeah, I'm oh, glad thanks. that I was... <laughs> the shoulder you could cry on tonight well we're super excited you guys had us on thank you so much yeah. for letting you know letting us uh join and be a part of it and mm -hmm. enjoy yeah. the time back for another one obviously. i feel like there was a big breakthrough tonight <laughs> for yeah. a couple we'll of years we'll breakthrough on billy's uh oh, no no not on me not on me I feel, I feel like you're choices. depressed because you're stuck eating turkey tacos chicken taco <laughs> listen dude I still, have my, I still have my sunday ritual of cadillac margaritas and carnitas don't you even worry about it so. mm, low sodium of course <laughs> no. no salt on the rim yeah no salt. Salt. Dude, look lady all... i'm on a diet so butter <laughs> is one of my favorite dip, food groups dips and salt fine with me so butter and I, salt I that's awesome butter and salt so honestly this is what i needed um, a haircut? You guys. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> my beard's short. My hair's short. What? Your beard is patchy. Yeah, because it's short. <laughs> oh, my beard's short. This is, it's not, I don't look like a 1980s kung fu character. <laughs> Relax. That's a stretch, bud. Uh, no. Listen. I I Love look like Vogue. a 1970s unemployed alcoholic country singer. So there you that go. Is oh, yeah. Outlaw country. No. Outlaw no, yeah. Country. Not like Cheryl. I love Cheryl. Thank so, you, guys. No, it really was good because I honestly, it sucks not having you here, you know, I know. in my office, in the studio, which we would normally be doing. Sharing uh, booze. Sharing booze. <laughs> Obviously, you guys would be over here too. We'd probably be taking an Uber to go get 
food somewhere after the podcast and turkey bread and tacos. Food is chicken so... taco, turkey tacos for all, and <laughs> bison. You know, but right? honestly, it's good to be back in the saddle. It's good to be back. Yes, for it is. Two. Thank uh, you, Kaylee. Yes. Thank you, Kaylee. Season two. Kaylee. Kaylee has been responsible um, behind the scenes for helping Billy and I get this thing dialed in um, to where we don't sound like shit. Um, those of you that have been listening to us for a while know we've had great sounding episodes, terrible sounding episodes, episodes where we forget to plug the mixer in. Um, mm -hmm. And, and here that's we not are. about them. That's about the actual EQ. <laughs> Yeah, or whatever that is. I don't know. I'm not going <laughs> to argue. Wow. So, I've really, it's really good to be back doing this podcast with you, Billy. And I'm really yes, looking forward to season two, getting some more guests booked. Um, I definitely have some people that want to come on, people that I want to have come on. I'm sure you do too. Uh, I think it's definitely a good thing. And we're just going to keep it going. Yeah. Excellent. Looking forward to it, guys. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Liz, thanks for coming on. Um, definitely I will say I do like the female dynamic. So, yeah, no, it's definitely yeah. good. Um, Liz, you're a powerhouse. Love the Instagram. Um, your pictures look amazing. I, I love, love, love the stuff that you do shooting the outdoors. Um, Kaylee, I have a feeling you're right behind doing some awesome stuff too. So, <laughs> Yeah, so I'm sure we're going to be, we'll have you guys back on um, to, you know, share your exploits, share your uh, adventures. Absolutely. Billy, um, you and I will uh, we'll get some stuff going. It's good to be back. Yes, I'm sir. excited. Very, very, very excited. Very glad to be here. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Take care. Absolutely. All right, girls, um, ladies, not girls, probably. Whatever. We'll, uh, yeah. Yeah. we'll talk Rough. to you we'll, we'll talk to you soon um and uh we'll uh billy and i'll talk about this and take this out so um we'll say goodbye to you two now bye -bye. and uh bye bye cheers and uh we'll see you we'll see you two later um billy it's been great having ha being back together yes you sir. And I have been really good friends for a long time being apart's definitely been you know a little bit of a different dynamic I definitely miss having you close by, miss having you here, miss ha being able to have uh, trips planned with you, tacos and whatnot. But, you know, we're back. Absolutely. Yeah, man. I mean, we're good to go. I think uh, we got the help we needed, and this is going to be an easy process from here on out, hopefully. And being able to meet up every two weeks and hang out with all our friends and share our experiences and what's going on on two different places even makes right. it more interesting. You know? Yeah. That's what it's all about. I like and... sitting in, sitting in your office and hanging out and having a drink, but I also like the fact that now we can kind of cover uh 1200 miles worth of distance and everything in between and things that are going on up here aren't happening there. It gives us more to talk about and more to, uh, to share with everybody. Yeah, for sure. And you know, it's, it's been, a, you know, thanks, thanks to a, like our, you know, what 15 listeners that uh, have hung on and they're probably going to be a little bit surprised when this episode drops and you push it on social media on. For the, sure. Uh, we. Uh, Dirt to whiskey podcast. Um, I'm long beach Mike on Instagram. If you don't already follow me, and uh, Billy is a uh, rocklander dot project on Instagram. And, you know, thank you all for hanging in there um, in our absence. Definitely appreciate all that. For sure. So that's it. Uh, we're, we're up and out and uh, stay tuned for episode two, where we'll have more uh, fun antics for you and another bottle of whiskey. I'm not sure which one it'll be. Maybe we'll open the EH Taylor. I got some McKenna. I don't know. There How about, you, send us, you know, hit us up on that Instagram page. Give us some suggestions. We'll go buy a bottle. Yes, Let us sir. know what you want us to review, check out, or suggestions that you think we may, might enjoy. Talk to awesome. you guys soon. Thanks again. We are out. <laughs>